Good evening and salutations, our soap opera fans. So tonight I am joined by the one and only Mr. James Live Jr. How are you doing today, my friend? Hello, our Bostic, and welcome, and thank you for letting me be on your channel. I get to just be here and be whatever you need me to be. I'm here for you, Albert. I said to him, I was like, listen, we're not, we're not doing Brock, we're not doing um, DC. I get to have James all to myself because I just don't like Cher. <laughs> so, that's just I how it, it is. I love it. So how are you doing, James? How have you been? This week has been good. Um, I, I've been taking it week for week because I, you know, I'm a caretaker of my parents or something, all kind of stuff with that. But this week in my business world has been very good, very well. Hello, everybody out there. Hello. Um, and I'm also coming off this huge Sprina Nation tour that I did this whole week, uh, basically. And um, so the, the the love has been wonderful. And I had a good Zoom today. I had a mental health chat Zoom today that did, was very well done. And people shared their feelings and about life. Uh, so this week's a good week, and it's hot in LA. So that's why I'm showing you my arms today, because I have a, It's hot in LA right now, so it's kind of. Ugh, so yes, and my hair's in a bun because it's not ready for you, but. Um, but yes, it's warm. But no, I'm happy, and this week was this week was a good week. How have you been? What was your week? I've been good. It's been hot. It's been hot. I mean, probably not LA hot, but like New York hot. But you you you've been in New York before, though, right? I, I I have my whole family. Yes, I've been to New York many, 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 many times. Yes, and I've lived there for a while. So yes, uh, New York hot's worse because you have humidity. We don't have humidity in Los Angeles, so you guys have a lot worse. I'm by the water, and so it's a little cooler, but it's just warm for me. It's just warm for me. I say people in here. Hi, people. Hi, George. Hi, Laura. Hello, everybody. Okay, I got people in here. Okay, that's right. Um, but like, so have you lived in LA all your life? I have, like, did you grow up like in LA or like where'd you grow up? So I, I was a person. I was born in Los Angeles proper, at a hospital that burnt down after I was born. So that was it. I was born and it burnt down. <laughs> uh, John John Wesley Hospital. So I guess either I'm the devil or somebody said that's it. Um, but I uh, was born in Los Angeles, half my life in LA, and then the last nine years were in Inglewood, California. Yes, Inglewood, the famous Inglewood. Um, and I was there until I was 18. And then I left home, went to college, lived other places like Sacramento, San Francisco, Pittsburgh, New York. I lived around. And then I was gone for about 22 years. And then I came back uh, 14 years ago. I came back. Wait, 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 14 years ago, I came back to L.A. And I've been here ever since. So I lived, I lived other places, too. I lived other places, too. What was your favorite? L.A. <laughs> really, really, really. I mean, I mean there, each place has its own place in my heart um and each and each place was good for me at certain times of my life now that i'm in my 50s being back in los angeles i have a home and all this stuff i'm glad to be here now um but i thought but i think overall living somewhere else was one of the best things i could have done for myself to go somewhere else experience life i had a whole life away from my family i was doing all kinds of stuff i should have been doing uh, and all kind of things. I raised my daughters and all this stuff. So I had a, I had a whole life outside of here. So by the time I was ready to come back here, it's like I'm here to settle down now. I'm here to settle down. So it gave you it gave you a lot of different perspectives, like living in different places, having different experience and stuff like that. It kind of like really helped you build your story. Just like you know, just taking different parts, different places, and experiences. So that's pretty cool. It's, I, I recommend anybody, if you can, well, back then it was cheaper. Uh, I'm a little older than you are. Uh, it, was a, it was a lot cheaper back in the day where I could move around. But I do, if you can't move, I say go, at least go on trips, get out, get out of your regular area. Um, but every place is different. You know, every place is, you know, Northern California is different than Southern California. Pittsburgh is different than California. New York is different than Pittsburgh. Like, it's all different. I get to see people from all walks of life, all different kinds of attitudes, um, through foods, got love food, um, and drink. Um, and just I had I just had a different life. I mean and I, it all does build up to where I am today. Interesting, interesting. Now you didn't start off doing YouTube, right? Like you so like what what okay, so like what got you into the entertainment business? Like what you know, what hit that buck for you? 
So my whole life, I never thought this could be happening. There's Mott's, you got the big one. <laughs> yeah, I'm on. It's a small one, lots for Mott's. The small <laughs> one. I'll always have my little ones. Anywho. No, but it's it's funny because I, I never thought a million grillion years of doing this. So growing up, I wasn't in theater. I didn't do any of that stuff. I went to school for journalism and nursing. I worked at a, I worked at a, a, a newspaper back in the 80s for a little while. And then I stopped and I went to nursing, did the whole nursing thing, whatever. It was 2007. It was 15 years, 15, 16, 16 years ago now. 2007. I was down in LA visiting. So living in San Francisco. And someone goes, James, you should be on television. I go, I hear that all the time. But I know, James, you should be on television. I go, that's very sweet of you. They go, James, I can get you on television. And it was Shannon Speaker who was the second AD on a show called House. House was huge at the time on Fox. Hugh Laurie, the whole gang. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh. I'm like I mean, that was my first entry. I was like, oh, okay. He goes, when we come down to LA, I'll get you on the show. Who do you want to work with? And there's Omar Epps on the show, Hugh Laurie's on the show. I was like, I like, I'll work with him. Do do? <laughs> so I was smart at my job, which I had been, I was doing farm and ag insurance, the whole story, uh, in San Francisco. I had three weeks off for paid vacation. So I took one of those weeks and came down. So I got paid from that job, came down to LA to do background work on house and be a, a special guest star work. Came down to LA, signed up with Virgo Talent. Hi, Virgo Talent. And literally, when I got on set, I was like, oh my goodness, I want to do this. This is crazy. I never thought it was that, it, I'm not saying it was that easy, but it was just kind of like, this is easier than I thought it was going to be. And then there, there's Hugh Laurie, and then there's Omar Epps, and there's Lisa Edelstein, like stars of the show, like see all the time, every week on the show. I'm like, this is like really happening. And I had never been on set before. I had never been on set before. And I was 38 years old. 38. So, I mean, I'm coming to this way late. Um, so then I did a stint on there. I played a doctor. did a whole thing on there. Loved it. Went back to San Francisco, and I was like, my life was changed. And then a year later, this job that I hated, my bosses were mean to me, and I quit. And then I said, okay, well, now I'm going to go to L.A. I said, I'm going to become a star. Uh, I'm going to be an actor. That's what I thought I was going to be. I had a friend down in L.A. I came down. I said, Virgo Town, I'm coming. So before I came to L.A., I had one. I had a, I had a commercial booked. And there was a show called Privileged. It was on WB. And I was going to go on the show. It was only on for one season. And I was going to play the, the gay. There was a gay couple who was going to get married. I was going to play the brother of one of the gay couples. And whatever. So... I said, okay, and so I, those two things, I had nothing else booked. My life was completely, I was, at that time I was 39 years old, and I was like, all righty, I guess I'll try this. I, I took my savings, took my last check, and I came back to L.A. to the house I grew up in. I shared with my brothers, and I came here, and I said, okay, I'm here. Here we go. I have no idea. And I literally, in 2009, when I turned 40 years old, is when I actually started the slower process of this. But I started a business first. I was a super organizer. I was a professional organizer, which I still am. And I did that first, got that going. Now I do acting jobs here and there, go on auditions and stuff. And I was like, I don't want to be an actor. I want to be in charge. Like, I want to be a producer. I want to be, I'm a writer. I've always written my whole life, but I was like, I, I don't I know any of that meant though. I was like, I just want to be a producer and a writer, and I don't know what that means. Meanwhile, I was never on YouTube. I wasn't on social media, I was barely on social media. I was like, eh, whatever. I'm like, this is for young people. All that stuff. I didn't know what YouTube was at first. I had no idea. I was in my 40s. I didn't even know what it was. And then um, the first thing was the first thing that I did after I, after I got out of the acting thing. Um, I always wanted to do radio because I've had this voice since I was 13 years old. And I wanted to do radio. And I said, okay. How do I get on radio? Well, someone saw a blog I had on organizing and they called me in. It was adrenalineradio.com. And they go, Can you make that into a show, a weekly show? And I was like, I'll do whatever you make me, I'll do everything I can do to get on. I want to get on radio, my own radio show. So at so eight years ago, nine years ago, I started my own radio show. 
And that's how I got started. That's how I got started just kind of in. So that's kind of the beginnings of it's like, so it's house, a couple of shows that come. I did a, can you, can you hear me now commercial? And then I did the, did that. Was you ever nervous at any point of doing any of this, like throughout that process, like being on radio, which is just like, I don't you, just, you just always gutsy, just like. Yep. That's, my mother never always tell you I was a very fearless person. I don't get, I don't get nervous. I don't get nervous. With this stuff like this, I'm like, I just feel, I'm so happy to be here. I'm like, I'm so happy to be there. I just, I don't get nervous. It's just like, okay, well, what do I need to do to do my job? So, okay, I'm going to go on radio. Well, I have the voice already, so I'll take care of that. You know, there's, there's ways, like, I know how to exercise. I'm also a singer, so I know, I know how to exercise my voice. And then it was like, oh, well, then, okay, have your material ready. It's like, what are you talking about? So I learned how to show run at the same time. So I ran my shows. I engineer a uh, shout to Brian Leone, who guided me through the process. And week after week, I got better and better on the radio. And, you know, station identifications and watching the clock and, you know, you know all that stuff. It was, I don't, I don't get scared. I don't get, I don't get nervous. That's good. I mean, that's, that's a rare, that's a rare talent to sit there and have. Um, and it, it's definitely served you well throughout you coming up and everything like that. So I think that that's pretty cool. And then you just, I guess from there, you just started doing YouTube and stuff like that. Oh, no, see, I mean, I didn't know. So then I was so doing radio. And I got a YouTube channel. So I got, a, I got a YouTube channel 10 years ago. It's like 2012. I got a YouTube channel finally. I'm like, I'm like literally 44 years old. I'm getting a YouTube channel. Um, I was on Twitter. I was on, I was on, I don't Instagram. I was here yet. I was on Twitter. I was on Facebook. Um, I was on Tumblr. Remember Tumblr, folks? Mm -hmm. I had a blog um, on Blogger. I was doing that and it was very successful. Now I, I had my business going and my business was doing fine. The organized business was doing fine. I was a little certified life coach. I was working on life coaching clients. And then the person I was dating, their best friend who they lived with was about to do a show. And, it goes, and, my, and, my, and my boyfriend at the time goes, James, you want to come over and meet him? Of course, it's your best friend. I want to meet him. His name is Peter Ramos. I met him. And we were talking at dinner, and he goes, oh, you like Days of Our Lives? And so I love Days of Our Lives. Hope's my character. I'm like, ah, oh, blah, blah. And he says, just casually, you should come on our show sometime. I go, what does that mean? I don't know what that means. He said, there's a place called After Buzz TV, which I had never heard before. After Buzz TV that puts on after shows. I'm like, what's an after show? Now, folks, this is before after shows became big now. This is before. This is like 10 years ago. Whatever. So I go, what is that? He goes, well, we come around like friends. We talk about a show. And we're debuting a show in a couple of months called The Days of Our Lives After Show. This guy named Tony Moore, we work with at Mickey's, is starting a show. I go, oh, I didn't even know Tony, who Tony was. And he goes, you should come on and guess sometime. You love Days of Our Lives. I said, I'm sure. I'm always like, yes to everything. Yes, sure. Yes, sure. Yes. Sure. <laughs> um, and Peter is Hispanic. And I heard Tony was black. And I was like, okay, my fellow peeps, let's, let's, well, whatever. I said, yeah, I said, sure. Here, you know, yeah, my, you know, you know, my boy, you know, my boy, so whatever. I went home, life went on. I'm just doing, doing myself, doing my radio show. And then they said the premiere was going to be February 9th or something. This was this was eight years ago. Um, and I go, and they go, James, we need you. Can you come on the next week? I'm like, guess what? You'll be a co-host. Like, I've never hosted before in my life. Like, hosting? What is that? Um, like, you're like on TV. They like, host. Like, I, so it's okay. I was coming. And I actually was going to support Peter more. I said, I'll fill in. I'm propping him up so he does well. So when you look at my first episode, folks, of Dish and Days from 2015, it's a very different James. I am so reserved. I have my glasses on. I'm wearing a, um, a polo shirt. That was my own thing. I had a polo shirt, my business on it. I was just like, hi, I'm James. I mean, I was so not this Albert at all. I, I actually want to sit down and try to find it. Like, I'm being so serious. Like, after we're done, I'm going to try to find it. Go Edition Days on, on YouTube, and you'll, you'll just go back to the first episode. Um, but so I was just like, it's not me. But I said, if I, had, if I walked into the studio, which was 30 miles from my house in the valley, and I was like, well, you miss After Buzz, Lauren? That's so funny. I miss it sometimes. <laughs> I miss it sometimes. Um, but I'm looking, I'm like, wow, all the lights and the cameras. And there's like, James will look at the camera, just look over here. I'm like, it was like, I was like, I'm home. I love this. I don't want to leave. Um, so then I hadn't met Tony yet because I was filling in for him. But I did a couple episodes. 
I went in chat room every week. I became the people's host. Um, and I used to show up and suddenly I was put on other shows. And then I was like, James, you've been here for a while. Well, like you're not, I wasn't even an official member after us TV, but I was very popular. People kept talking like I started to I started to blossom out there too. And then I asked them, Do you have a general hospital show? Like, no. They go, if you want one, cast it and come back to us and do I do a, I do a sample show for I do a pitch. I had never done a pitch before. I had never done any of that stuff. I said, sure, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's how, so that's how I got so that's how I, that's how I leapt into this part of the business, which I've been doing for the last eight years. So <laughs> Like my my question is like how do you do it all? Because like you have stuff that goes on in your personal life, and you see, I mean, you manage it in a way that I gotta sit there and be honest. I am just genuinely impressed. Not many people can sit there and do it. Like how do you do it? Like how do you just have that resolve to sit there and keep going when you just have practically shit hitting the fan all the time? Yeah, how do you do it. I yeah, I get that question asked all the time. <laughs> it's like the number one question. How you do it all, James? I don't know how to fucking do it all. I just somehow do it. Um, I just, I move forward. No, I, you know, here's the deal. I love this part. I love this business. I love every part of it. I get to do, I'm doing this full time now. So I get to create my life. That's what keeps me going. That's what keeps me motivated. I can on a Tuesday go, I want to record an episode of Bold and Beautiful. And I just come online and do it and put it out there. And people love it. You know, one end go, you know, I want to do a show on Star Wars. Just do a show on Star Wars, get a couple of co-hosts, and we do it. Like, I have this autonomy that I get to do whatever I want that I've never had another job before. And, you know, um, and it's fun. This part of the business is fun. It's fun for me. This is like this, like, interacting with fans, do, do, come up with shows, doing interviews. Like, this part is fun. It almost feels like it's not work. But it is work. Because you're right, you have to plan everything. You know how this has to work. Mm -hmm. Compared to my life, which is I'm caregiving a mom. We just lost a stepdad. I have kids. I have grandkids. Like There's all kinds of stuff going on there. That's life. I get to come here and be away from them. <laughs> this, is, this is my, I get to have my <laughs> away from them. It's like, it's my chance to, but I just, I, just, I, I don't, but I seriously, I tell people I'm, I'm very organized. That's probably how I can do it all. But in some ways I go, I don't know how I do I say God. God gets me through it all. I do it all somehow through him. Um, I enjoy what I do. Um, it's fun. I just, I just, I just do it. I mean, because it's because I want to do it, and I, and I, and I have a lot to say, and I have a lot to, I want to accomplish. You think that being an organizer also helps you with that? It helps you be able to manage that in your your day to day life, and then coming on here, and then you got a you got a lot going on. I, I know that's kind of a pun, but like. You're a producer, you're you're a writer, you're a director, and you come on YouTube and you're doing that. I mean, it's it's crazy. It's it's inspiring. It's inspiring in a lot of ways. And you know, when we first started off, you know, it was uh <laughs> it was yeah. it was definitely interesting. Yes. Um yeah. I remember I um I called up DC and I think I asked you a question and at the time, I, I felt like maybe I asked the question, maybe you answered it in a way where it's like, I wasn't like, I felt like maybe it just kind of came out the wrong way. So I called up DC. I was like, DC, who's this guy named James? Should I, should I go to war with this guy named James? But I was like, you know what? Let me sit there. He's been on this for a while. Let me sit there and really get to know him. That's why when we did our four collab or whatever, it was so amazing because it was like, I got two people here that literally inspired me doing this. And of course, you know, one is Brock and you, James, it's like, you inspired me. I inspired DC. And it's like, how do you feel about that? Like, how do you feel that you've been inspiring so many people to do this? Like, seriously. It's, it's crazy. Uh, I, again, there was thought, uh, I, I always view myself as some old man who's doing this. I'm like, I'm in my fifties. I'm like, who cares what I'm thinking, what I'm doing? Uh, and I'm finding out men, women, black, white, whatever, are saying to me, oh, no, James, I'm doing this because of you. I saw your show on After Buzz. Now I have my own show. Or one of your classes on writing. Now I have a book coming out. Like, it's it's inspiring. It's, and it's what I, it's actually what I want. Part the whole, here's the whole deal. 
I look at life this way. I'm very blessed to be able to do this. And I'm not telling you it's easy every day. There are times I want to pull my hair out and scream in the corner. And there's sometimes I do. Uh, there are times when I wake up and I have like 10 problems to solve before 8 o'clock in the morning. And I'm like, oh, I got, you got to be killing me. Um, there are times I run into my garden screaming. I mean, it's like, yeah, there's sometimes it's, it is crazy talk. Um, there are days where I'm just like, my desk is so, I, I, I'm, I'm ever going to catch up. But it all works out. And I've learned to just forgive myself and do what I must remain, do what I can, do what I can't. Um, but I, and I, that, and I, but I, I'm here of service. I found my call. My calling isn't just to be a host. My calling isn't just to be a producer. My calling isn't just to be an on-air personality and become rich and famous. I don't give a shit about that stuff. My, my service is if I can do it, possibly you can do it too. How can I get you there? How can I help you? How can I showcase you? If you're a fan, I look out for you. What are your thoughts? And if I want you to be heard, what are you thinking? What's going on? Let's talk about it. Um, let's have a community. I call it the village. I've been saying that for the last eight years. I want the village mentality where everybody comes together from different parts and you lift each other up. And I realize brown voices are very important. There's not enough of us out there. We need more of us out there. Brown business is important. We need us out there. We need your voice is important. DC's voice is important. Brock's voice is important. Sabrina's voice is important. You know, Tony's voice. Is like all of our voices are important. We have to populate. We have to populate all of this. YouTube, Spotify, Apple. I, we have to get our brown faces and voices out there and populate it so that we can tip the scales to where at some point, it won't matter what we are. You know, whenever I bring up race, a lot of people get mad at me and call me race baiting and all that stuff. But I'm like, race, we're not post-racial. Race plays a part in everything. And my thing is, though, but if we do more, if more of us go out there, then hopefully at some point it really won't matter what, what race we are. It'll just be, Albert's channel's great. James's stuff is good. I mean, I'm always working towards that. And the fans, the fans are the ones, I, you and I would not be here. I have, I have, I have a fan base called the Lotties. I am very. I know this. I'm, I'm humbled by that. I mean, everybody has, my guys got our own fan base. They don't, they don't have a name. Like I, I do. And my Lotties are one of their, they, they bought me this chair. My lot, these Lotties are amazing to me. Um, and, but the thing is, we would not be here without them. Like literally, you and I be talking to one person, talking to ourselves. They Pretty much. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's, that's, the, that's the whole point. I mean, that's, I, I, I take the fans very seriously. And I think that's why I'm successful. And AfterBuzz TV taught us that eight years ago. AfterBuzz was like, remember, your friends watching a TV show and discussing it, or your friends who saw a movie and you're discussing it. And that was a very smart, I took that motto for JLJ Media. You and I are friends talking about each other. We're having a conversation and we're letting them in on it. The Monique and Laura and George and Cat Lady, a lot of them are Lotties actually, JH fan, whatever. You guys, are our friends. We're here together on this Saturday night and we're talking. And I think that's important to acknowledge. Yeah, and it's funny because like me and DC recently they're talking and you know we you know we talked about you and stuff as far as you practically you know you've been you've been on here so long that you practically have like a blueprint as far as how to do these live streams. Um you know we always have a, a different unique takes on it, but it's something that instilled in me watching you treat you know treat people in the audience like they're part of the live stream yes um yeah it's very much the wendy williams how you doing situation yes. where you say they're your they're your co-hosts you know you come on here albert talk about whatever you want to talk about if they're going to spend their time they got they got everybody got so many choices exactly they got a million choices they don't need to look at you or me they got a million choices <laughs> The fact that they decide to sit like right now and say, I'm gonna watch Albert and James talk, I don't think I don't take that for granted. Which is very important. You know, and, and after what CV taught me this. They taught me this, and me and Tony took it on further, and many of my colleagues at Flobo, like we took it on further. We this format I think is the, one of the best formats. And I love doing lives. I teach classes on how to do lives, and and the whole thing is it's it's not super hard, but it's not super easy either. You gotta make sure you, you handle it. But it's a lot of fun. 
and the interaction you get from the fans and the people we are it's just it's there's nothing like it nothing like it yeah and it's it's crazy like i said you inspired me to do it because i was just sitting there just doing reviews and stuff like that and of course when i went on your channel i was like you know what he's having so much fun doing this let me sit there and let me try it and uh, i think it's been like what maybe a half a year i've right. been doing this so like you know it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. You have to meet people. And you know what? If folks tell me, all, like, tomorrow I would do my soap shows. Every Sunday I do wine on GH. And we get up to 100 people watching each time, whatever, right? So we get people. And those are, those are good numbers for live on a Sunday. It's great. But we taught them that eight years ago. Spend an hour with us. Spend an hour and a half. Get out of your life for a second and be around other people who also love the same show. That's the fun part. So we're all in there together, and they're getting to know each other. Um, they're talking to. I, I love all of that. I love all of that. It's a it's a really good energy, really yeah. good synergy when you have in the chat and stuff. Has that always been the case, or has it just like has you okay? So like, have you have you found the way to like mold it into where it's like everyone? Because I'm imagining it didn't start off where it's like everyone is happy, happy, joy, joy, and it's like. Because uh, how do you do that? <laughs> how do you do that? Uh, okay, so when we started, we had nobody watching. We, we, we literally had to start, you know, we had to start from scratch. Um, and on my G8, well, see, on what I'm, I'm I have all your shows, on days, we said we're three dudes talking about soaps. So there were a lot of folks who didn't like that. Hmm. Um, and then we have, then on my G8 show, I brought two women in. I had Lee Dean Harvey and Lucretia Lyon. And then Frank Moran, I can still do it. So we had two guys and two girls. We had a black woman and a white woman, a straight guy and me. And so that was a little more diverse, but that caused a lot of stuff in the fandoms too. So I have told people this, and I told this last night on my show, over the last eight years of doing this, uh, we've gotten death threats. We've gotten uh, into arguments. We've gotten name called. Uh, we've gotten all kinds of things and, and over the years over our opinions of certain storylines. We've gotten harassed. We've had people call us names, uh, people in the press do things. I mean, it literally, it was, I've, we've, I've been through it all. I've been through it all uh, online. And just what you learn after a while is I started to weed out the ones, you know, you can, you can get rid of people. After a while, they don't come. If they, they again, they don't spend their time. If no one, the chat usually handles things before I do. So if somebody <laughs> to start something, usually they get to them first, and then they just don't come back. There's one person who comes once every two or three weeks. They'll come in my chat and try to start something, but it never it doesn't work. So they're doing it less and less. I won't, I won't call their name out, but yeah. uh, but it's completely over the years. We oh my god, this one guy harassed Lucretia on Twitter every day for like two weeks. We tried blocking him, muting him. You take start a new account, call her names because she didn't like Sunny on GH. She That's didn't all. like Sunny. Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah. How dare her, right? That's right. That's right. right. Exactly. It's like, <laughs> okay, it's just her opinion, and who cares? Are you like Sunny? You like Sunny? You know, who cares? Um, it's crazy. I got death threats for certain things that I said. And they were like, you know, well, I know where your daughter lives. They're like, you know, and I have to take it kind of seriously, and I had to kind of go, okay. Told my daughter, I'm so sorry you didn't ask for this, but just keep an eye out. Um, is Albert had a problem recently? Oh, you had that problem recently, Albert? So said a chat. <laughs> That's why I'm asking you. This this is you know, I always sit there, whatever I'm sitting there doing this, whatever I sit there and feel like I may have a problem or whatever, you're the first person I sit there and think about. Because I'm just like, you know what, James has been through it all, you know. Um, so that's why when I when I said that, I'm pretty sure people are in the chat are sitting there laughing like, hmm. Sure. Yep. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so that's what, always, what happened. You'll we'll see what like the, are people coming for you in the chat or something or afterwards? Or what it it, you know, it's one of those things where it's like I feel like my my soap opera chats are starting to become a actual soap opera. So it's like <laughs> <laughs> it's like I just have to sit here and start, like you said, I have to start weeding them out. Now, what I thought about was like you know, and Akisha and some other people was they saying it's like you're too nice. Oh. You know, like I'm too nice. And it's like, if it was James, James would have just sat there and just cut them off with the quickness. So it was like, you know what? 
I was like, you know, maybe, maybe I actually have to start to take taking it the uh, the JOJ media route because um, me trying to be a little bit too nice is just clearly not working. Um, but that, I mean, that's just you know, my whole thing is it's small in comparison to let's say death threats that you got, which is um, a whole lot more scary. Yes, I've had a stalker. It's it was crazy. Um, here's the thing. I always say this: my pages. My videos, my shows are not a democracy. They're a dictatorship. Yes. Shows. They're my shows. I mean, you don't like it, then don't come to my page or my show. Um, <laughs> but you can come. And yeah, and I let and people have a right to say what they want. I mean, you can say what you want. Um, but if you start acting out your ass, I will tell you all first and then I will get you out. And I have and they tell my, my fans know this, I have no shame. I mean, I don't put up with it. Plus, I want it, I want a safe space. For the fans who come, also on the chat, you can have discourse. You can disagree. You and I disagree over things over the years. It's fine, but you know when it goes into name calling, bullying, uh, threats, nah, we don't do that. That's just nope. We're just done. Nope, we're not doing that. Uh, someone called me the N word once in this day, and I was like, okay, and we're done. And you're out. Uh, you can take the N word and go that way. Um, and right, G fans, start your own show. And some people have actually because they didn't like me, whatever. But that's the whole point. It's like. There's a million choices out there. Find the right show for you that fits for you, but you're not going to tell me how to do my show or put it on my page. That's like, hi, Kristen. I'm not, I'm just not going to, nope, not doing that. Nope, 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 nope. nope. Being nice, you have, to be, you have to be stern and direct. Yes. These folks don't learn. They don't. They'll keep trying you. Um, there's one person, I almost want to say their name. I'm going to read that shady. Uh, they try. Oh, they try me. Oh, they try me. Starts with a T. It's all saying. They'll try me, and I just I don't play into it. And when you don't play into it, they get upset, and then they kind of die off. But you know, but you know what's really sad though is that I know exactly what you're talking about. I'm not going to say this. I'm not going to be shady. Yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah. no, But yeah, it's just like, but you, they try, and I go, nah, I'm not going to. I'm not going to. You have to, you have to rise above it. You have to just go. That's how they are. And if someone doesn't agree with me, it's fine. Don't agree with me. Good. Good luck. Bye. I know what I know. You think you know what you know? Then, then you know what you know. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna fight with you or whatever. You're not gonna change my mind. If I feel I know something for sure, then I'm not gonna change my mind. But there are other things that my mind's been changed. And other things. I don't know about everything. Um, but but there's things. But if I if I say I know this for sure, I've seen it. I, I mentioned something last night that folks didn't like, and I didn't give a shit. I was like, I'm telling you what I've seen. About Eden McCoy, my buddy, um, and they didn't like that. But I was like, I was speaking my truth. I am speaking my truth, and so you can't change my mind. And if you're upset with me, this your right to be upset with me. Be upset with me, have a good time. But if I know something to be true, then I'm not going to not speak it. That's on all sides. That's on everything. Yeah, and you know, and that's that's the funny thing though. It's like I think last week. Yeah, it was it was last week or maybe the week before. It's like you know what. Yeah, I think I need to start taking a page from uh from James' book and uh had to sit there and start blocking some people. Like dead ass serious, I really had to sit there and be like, you know what? This isn't working. What does James do? Okay, yeah, let's try that. Yeah, I think that I think that approach is gonna work a little bit better. So I'm the still sitting there taking lessons from you a little bit, you know. Albert, the whole point for me is I'm creating my world. Yeah. If they can have their world, <laughs> I'm creating my world. And my world is over here. And so I'm going to do my thing over here. And you can say, I don't care what you're saying behind my back. Say what you want. If you're talking about me, then I must be doing something good. So you talk about me. Have a good old time. I don't need to see it. I don't need to hear it. I don't need to feel it. Um, and and also, you're not, you're not going to get to me. It's like, see, they blocked me, so they must be cowards. No, I block you because you're an idiot. It's just like I don't have <laughs> – and life, you know, life is falling apart out, out there. We have some major problems happening in America, folks. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's things that's for black men we got to worry about than you being mad at me because I didn't like Sonny and Carly or whatever. Like that's there's more to life than that. I mean, our lives literally are on the line. Like I will go. I'm busy with that right now. So you have fun over there. Saying James is a coward because he blocked me. But sure, okay, I'm a coward. Have fun. I'm over here living my best life. And all those folks who do all this stuff. They're, no, they're not succeeding. They're nobodies. They're doing nothing. They're just they're just spreading misery. And they don't even get that that's what they, I would say they, the, those people up there, mm-hmm. what you do. They want you to do. And see, I'm a person, I like to fight with black folks. I just don't. Because I feel like 
that's what they want. So I try to befriend as many black folks and be each other's sides. But I just feel like, no, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to be fight with other black folks because that's what they want us to do. They want us to divide and conquer us and have us against each other. I don't like nope, not doing that. No. Nope. So you can disagree with me and stuff, that's fine, but I'm not gonna fight with you. Oh, I get it. <laughs> I get it. But, you know, like I said, and it's it's just one of those things where it's like, and yeah, we're going to, you know, throughout this year, throughout the rest of this year, we're probably going to sit there and disagree on something because you're a Taurus, and I'm a Leo, and that's just pretty much how it is. But, you know, it's it's still one of those things where it's like, I do sit there because I'm, I'm still learning. I, I try to learn every day from different people. You're one of those people when I sit there and say, you know, you're practically a mentor to me because it's like, you got me started doing this stuff. So, like, I'm always sitting there taking, like, cues and stuff like that from you as well. Um, but is that just, like, weird, though? Like, you actually think, like, when you start doing this, that you're just going to, like, inspire people and people are going to be, like, kind of taking, like, little bits and stuff like that from you? Like, I never in a trillion years thought of my life, anybody you follow my ass. I, I just never, <laughs> I never, I, I've always been me. And so I just, I just, I... I give you full James Law Jr. Whatever this is, this is. I've always been. This is me off camera and on. I'm I'm just so happy to be here in this space. And I'm so busy trying to make my way um, myself through the chain and through all this stuff that to me, I'm like, okay. I mean, if someone latches on and goes, James, I like what you're doing. I want to kind of follow you. I'm like, me? 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 But I take it. I take it seriously. I, I take it. I take mentorship seriously. I take helping people seriously. I put my money where my mouth is. I put my time where my mouth is. I, I'm just like, what do you need? Okay, what can I do? I'm like, what do you need? What can you do? That's just. Let me. What can I help you with? I brought many of you guys on my network on my shows. Um, they're like, isn't that your competition? No, no competition. There's enough room for everyone. We need to get rid of that crap, that that monkeys in the in the uh, barrel mentality. It's like there's there's enough room for Albert. Like DC and I didn't agree on something today. We didn't agree on something, and we just talked it out, and life went on. I mean, it's like he has his thoughts and stuff. I have mine. You have your but Life goes on. I'm not here to make it huge. You know, I, I'm not he, I'm not here to blow it up into something. You know, hugely. Like I said, when there are more important things, but it's just it's a trip. That somebody tell me like today I had a Zoom and everybody was kind of giving me, like they say, they're my flowers at the end of the, of the Zoom. It's uh, It made me cry, but it's like, it's really, and that's what this whole week was really weird for me. Sprina, shout out to Sprina Nation. They just came to my side all week. They were just like quoting my words. All these black women said they felt heard by me. They felt I was the first person to really hear them. And I said, I will support black women as long as I, you know, it's my whole life. You know, you know and I said, well, I support all women. But of course, I was supposed to support black women. That's my mother. That's my sister. That's my daughter. That's my niece. You know, that's my grandmother. Um, and but they were telling me on Twitter and on Instagram and, and messages how much my words meant to them, and that was overwhelming. That was that because I never know if anybody cares what I say. I'm mean, I, I say shit all the time. I'm like, Does anybody care what I say? Oh no, no. I mean, this is whatever. Um, and to hear people saying people like you or other people tell me. You know, 10-4 JCR, they said I'm their mentor that could do without it. Like to somebody so people say nice things to me about what my help has been to them. Alan Locker has, has thanked me online. And I'm just like, I just I'm here, I said I'm of service. I'm completely of service. And I always wonder, I always say I always wonder, thank you, Nikisha, I appreciate that. I always wonder when I die, what my what they will say about me in the soap history books and press history books. I'm always curious how that will how that will turn out because I feel like I've done a lot. And my hands have been around a lot, and I know a lot of people uh, in the industry. So I'll be very curious to see what they say about me after I'm dead. Well, I mean, hope. Well, let's let's not hope that you don't die for a very, very, very long time. Let's just, you know, let's just push that far away. <laughs> but I, I think you know, honestly, tell you the truth. One of the many reasons why I actually want to sit there and do this tonight is because you're always in there showcasing other people. You always sit there bringing new people on and stuff like that. And I was like, you know what? Let's sit there and showcase James. Let's really sit there, get to know James, really sit there and just appreciate him because you're always sit there inspiring other people. You're always showcasing other people. You're always sit there ready to lend a happy hand. You're not really about, oh, my numbers are better than yours. Or I'm more famous than you or anything like that. So I was like, you know what? 
Even I sat there and listened to me for like seven days. Let's sit there and celebrate change. You know, let's let's you know that's and that's you're, that's on, you're, on, all the time. you're on all the time. You're on all the time. Like shit, you're on all the time. <laughs> that's why I was like, let's 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 give James his flowers because I feel like you deserve it at this point. Yeah, I'm sorry, folks. I know I'm, I'm but I'm gonna die someday. Death's gonna come, you guys. It's gonna happen. We're not gonna leave here alive. I mean, we're gonna go someday. So yeah, yeah, years, like years. Okay, There's... I'm a black man in America. I'll fucking live years. Um, but yes, uh, but no, thank you. No, I appreciate it. No, I just, I just. For me, this is this is fun, and I like to do this case. I can be, I can just sit back and talk about me. You know? Um, but it's it's fun, and I don't know. I just think it's it's just we have to we have to come together. We have to be working together. We have to support each other. It's just it's it's you know this business is being run by certain types of people, and we have to get our two cents in there, and our ten cents in there, and our twenty cents in there, um, and like I said, and populate. Um, show them that we're good too. And what we have to say is good, and what we have to say is is, is true, and um, and our shows are entertaining also. Um, and so, you know, for me, because I do, everybody, your your friends are very nice, so thank you. Um, just see the chat. But, but for me, because I'm a, I'm because I actually do interviews, I do all this other stuff. I feel like yeah, we have we have different levels, but I'm not like sitting there, look at him, there, look at Albert down there. I don't look at that. I'm like, look at Albert's online again today. That means he's committed to doing this. And that makes me smile. Like, he's on there. The one time I came on during your time slot, I didn't realize it was your time slot, but I was <laughs> time slot. And um, I was like, wow, people do come on at this time. It's kind of nice. But I haven't done it again. I learned my lesson. I come on a little earlier. Uh, but no, but it's just like, but it's but I'm saying, but you are you're committed. And I was like, look at I was looking at you going, you are doing pretty well in terms of looking at the chats. Talking, look at chat. You do pretty good with that. You're, you have a you have a you have a faithful audience who comes in and watches your shows. They do, yeah. Um, and so the other people too. So I'm like, so I, I so I don't see you as competition or like you're below me. I just go, he's my colleague, and I'm like, he's and he's up, he's out there doing it too. I say on my shows, follow Albert Bostick, follow Ten Four GH, follow Tony Warren Day. Like I, I, you're part of the conversation. I mean, it's like it's not about hiring because you know what, numbers can come and go. Tomorrow, tomorrow. I mean, I'm thinking it's gonna happen, but tomorrow I could go on, and all of a sudden nobody's listening. I went. I one time. I've never happened to you. One time. I mean, I have to say, but I am. I am somebody. But one time I came on, and I think, I think YouTube didn't tell people I was on, and for a half an hour I had nobody watching. Now it's the first time ever that nobody was watching my video, and it really felt kind of weird. I was like. Why right about here? Nobody like me anymore. So it was a humbling experience. It was kind of like James, you get too big for your britches. This this could happen too. And I was like, and I, I said, well, I guess I'll get off now. Bye. As I'm about to get off, and some folks came on. But it was funny. But for about a half an hour, nobody was on. I'm like, that's a trip because that reminds me of when I first started. Because when we first started, I had like one or two viewers, and one yeah. was like, just a look a look a looky loo. Like, who are you? You know, when we went to the show, um, we all we have to start from somewhere, right? We start from scratch. Um, but I, I've been in scratch. I mean, just I'm sorry, I've been mean, eight years. I've been in scratch. So it's like normally I have an audience. Uh, someone sitting here in the chat. Usually when something news happens, they come to me, and that's what I wanted. I want you guys to come see what James has to say. Um, but that day, no one gave a shit. It was like we don't care about James today. I was like, dang it, nobody's here for me. I look good today. My hair was done. I was like, dang it. <laughs> But it, it, I mean, well, every time I come on, you know, I usually see you, you know, I'm usually sitting there watching like why or whatever. So like during the commercial break, it's like I look at my phone on YouTube and like your face will sit there and pop up. So like I get the notifications sometimes when I go on YouTube. Um, so, you know, I'm always coming up in there, sitting there listening to see what you got to say. Um, always sitting there thinking, you know what, maybe I should come on around this time and just just to kind of mess up James, just just a little bit, just to kind of yeah, rile him yeah, up. Yeah, you know, I'm talking smack most of the time on it anyway. I'm, I'm usually eating some food or my applesauce or my hair is usually quite like my hair tonight, folks. This is my hair. I haven't put no product in it today. This is, this is me in the morning. Usually I'm like, hi, I'm Frederick Douglass. No, um, I don't know what's going on. So that, that's me in the mornings. But right now my hair is a mess, so it's 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 nice. Now you got a um you got a thing that's going to be going on soon, right? In Vegas. So I have I have several I have, I have, I'm not, I'm not all that I have several things going on. 
Uh, no. Um, so my hair, like my hair, it's 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 thick and it's crazy. I love it's down to my shoulders. It's crazy. I said I need I to do it today. Uh, cause it's too hot in LA. Um, okay. So on the 17th through the 19th, I'll be in Vegas. The Lotties meetup will be the 18th. I'm working on details. So this week, look out for more details. Um, we have some folks coming. It's in Vegas, so we'll have a good time. I'll be at, I'll be at a nice hotel. Uh, but more details for that. And then also, I could have my Zooms. I always have my Zooms that I go on every weekend. But also on the 23rd, I have another fan base I'm part of. They're called the Hardys. They watch the show When Calls the Heart on Hallmark Channel. I'm a King Hardy. I do an after show for that. I'm their special guest on the 23rd in San Juan Capistrano. So I will be their special guest on Sunday agenda for that. So I have those two things for sure coming up with some little kind of live appearances of James Law Jr. happening. Uh, you know, the reason why I'm Smith is the reason why I was Smith to ask him about that is because you actually inspired me to do my own um fan event, fan made up event. So tell me more about that. What's going on? So the 29th of um this month, we're going to be sitting there doing for like members only. It's going to be a fan event or whatever that we're going to sit there and just meet up. I already got the place picked out. So it's going to be a lot of fun. And, you know, I was like, you know, I was like, you know, I think it's really interesting what James is doing. So I was like, I'll just sit there and try that. So I you actually inspired me to sit there and do that. Well, you know, here's the thing. And this is for everybody who's watching or whatever. That's very smart of you. And see, here's the thing. When you build the fan base, they will follow you. If they if they'll do whatever you're doing, they will follow you. If you treat them well, they will follow. Yeah. They will show up. And so, to me, people want connection. People want connection all the time. And be there's the pandemic when we were robbed of it. They want connection, and I think that's the whole point: is that you're not creating a place for connection. It could be four or five people. It doesn't matter. It could be twenty people. It doesn't matter. I had, there was an event thrown for me. Um, two years ago, well, was, no, before pandemic, four years ago in Ohio, we had 51 people come to it, and I was like, I'm just amazed. And I mean, they were crying and shaking my hands and calling Mr. Lot. I was like, What's going on? Um, but it was, I had the best time, and it was like, it was a complete connection with your audience, and that's kind of something that we are just, it just, it's, it's just, it just we need more of that. I think if more pe people ask me, What are some of the keys to success? And I say without any irony or any smile on my face or anything, you're good to your fans and offer them things within your reach. That's how you build success. That's how you build it. It's when you talk to the audience and make them a part of what you do. That's how you build it. Seriously, and people ask me all the time, how do you go viral? How do you do this? I'm like, because I've talked to all these people. I, I mean, I, I literally have put out the work of engagement. Engagement. You can have two million followers, but if you have two people post, two likes on your post, I may have 3,000 followers, but I'll have 50 people commenting on my post. That's what's better. That's, what, that's the whole thing that's better. So you have to really engage your audience. So that's good. I'm, I'm very proud of you. That's, that's great. Yeah, thank you. I mean, like I said, <clears throat> you know, when I heard you, you know, Smith there doing your fan event or whatever, I was thinking, I, I think that's a pretty cool idea. Well, I think that's a pretty cool idea. So I had to sit there and give you shout outs and credits, you know, for that because, you know. Yes, the bread refrigerator video. Yes, GH fan. The video, <laughs> yeah, baby. I saw, so, folks, if you don't know, which I, I still get people sending me the video. Uh, and the and the and the reaction videos. Um, two and a half years ago, on TikTok, I did an eight second video, eight seconds, and I don't even like bread. I had bread in my refrigerator, and I said, "You know, you're black when you have bread in your refrigerator." The dumbest statement on earth. It makes no sense. And now we're like at eighty million views, and I've been featured in. I mean, it's just, it's. Made me a lot of money too, actually. <laughs> like I said, can we say like, yeah, a lot of money? Um, I bought this computer. Actually, I'm looking, I'm working on it right now from that. Um, it is the albatross of my life, but I'm learning to live with it. Um, and I have a book coming out called Going Viral. That'll be out soon. I talk about the whole experience of the several times I've gone. I, I know it sounds so bougie, but I have gone viral several times. I'm very fortunate. 
But the bread refrigerator, that my Jimmy Kimmel thing, those are two things I get the most reaction from. Yeah, I do I do remember actually seeing that too, because I, I one of your channel, I was like, wait, wait, that's that James on uh Jimmy Kimmel. That's that's crazy. Uh, well you I see you're on, a couple of times. You see, you're on the East Coast. So it's funny because my East Coast family, like now I sound like voice men or whatever. Um, they saw it, they did I, I get just okay. So folks, if you don't know this. Also, two years ago on my birthday, 2021 was like my year for some reason. I was on Jimmy Kimmel Live. I made history. I was the first live studio audience member for any late night TV show. So I literally made history on television. Like, it's this craziest thing. Now I'm part of the Jimmy Kimmel family now and all that. Um, but what's funny is I filmed it. They don't film at nighttime, folks. It's during the day. So I filmed it for East Coast. We did promos. I hadn't even gotten home yet to make the announcements and like everything when all of a sudden it was airing on well abc yeah. during prime time shows on the east coast in the midwest and they're like is that cousin james is that james Lord, james? And i'm like hi and they're like and they're like what is going on and i'm like yes i'm gonna be on jimmy kimmel tonight and they're like what and then across the country like, every time it aired my phone would blow up everything was blowing up my like, facebook blew up um, and the picture I posted of me and Jimmy was there, and it, it just, it's, it was one of the greatest experiences of my life. I loved it. I still have the fruit basket. I have all the, the goodies they gave me and his signature and everything. So it was, it was, so I went viral then too. So it's kind of funny that I went viral for certain things. Now, now James, do you, do you actually still have any bread in your refrigerator or no? Right. Okay. Ironically, <laughs> ironically today, I have some bread because I had bought these cheddar better um, <laughs> uh, sausages. I was like, I need some. I need some uh, hot dog buns. So I actually have hot dog buns in my refrigerator. But normally, I haven't had any bread in my refrigerator for like the last six months. I don't eat bread that often. I don't. I swear it, Albert. I swear it, Albert. I don't. Okay, so you hear that chat, right? So, so he's not gonna after this bread. It's gonna be done for a little bit. So we don't have to sit there and keep questioning this man for like maybe another six months or something. I have Mott's applesauce. That's what I have in my refrigerator. I do not have. Yeah, I got, I got my my little well, my little big ass jar right here too. Which is why I make that I joke. Jar. No, I do little. I like these little cups. <laughs> it keeps me honest, Albert. It keeps me honest. Um, but no, but yeah, it's it going viral is one of the strangest things in your life that could ever happen. I was on a cruise uh, back in January, and these kids were like, "You're the bread guy," and I was like, uh, "Hi," on a cruise. Hi. Um, and so that's, and I mean, so I was like, I'm still getting, I mean, or you're the Jimmy Kimmel guy, you know, whatever, or I occasionally get these soap stuff. You're from Dish and Days or you're from GH or and I'm like, yes, I'm that, I'm that guy too. So I get, I get those three are the ones I get the most like if I'm out in the street. And I, I, I feel like you've made so many connections, not just with the audience, but I mean, also with other YouTubers, you know, you got Brock, you got me, you got DC, you got Tony Moore, you got, um, Tim for GH. You got Dion's Corner. I mean, just the, the list just literally goes on. And, you know, like what, what DC says, I feel like out of all the different genres in YouTube, I feel like I feel like the soap one is probably the least drama out of all, you know, compared to all the rest of them. I was at least I haven't I haven't had any well other with other like, you know, creators and stuff like that. I feel like it's it's been the least drama um, in the genre, but you have a uh, you have kind of a different look there, buddy. Uh <laughs> I, do. I do. I'm also laughing because they're like we're twin applesauce, twin. Um, yes, I got to applesauce again. I'll probably get tighter at some point. Um, they can Albert get a bigger applesauce? That's hilarious. Uh, now, actually, don't have no any bigger jars than that. That's the biggest jar you can get, I think. Yeah, the one you got. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I can because I am part of several genres. I'm part of the uh, Star Wars universe, and there. Um, and you know, just just on the side now, just on the side question, how how has it been in the Star Wars universe? Because I'm, I'm I feel like uh, so tell me your experience. I'll tell you. So I'm a Star Wars fan fanatic. I mean, I'm. I mean, I saw. I've seen every movie in the theater since they came out in 1977. I mean, I was I was eight years old. The whole thing. So for and I've read the books, no thing. So when Disney Plus said we're doing Star Wars series, I was shocked. Number one, there were always movies. 
Hi, Jacarius. There are always movies. Now they're going to Mandalorian. I'm like, the Mandalorian? I'm like, what's that? Oh my God, what's going on? So it took me a minute. And I said, okay. And then I said, they're gonna do they're gonna do a Boba Fett series. They're gonna do they're gonna do a Obi-Wan. And so I started getting a little excited because the universe was growing. To do after shows, I was a little nervous. That's when I was a little nervous. But I'm fearless. I go, I found two people who want to do them with me. I said, we're gonna do them. And we're gonna be different than the others. Because most, and that's I say this, a lot of Star Wars podcasts, they're gatekeepers. They're very much like, this is how it is. If you don't feel this way, you're wrong. We're not like that. Again, we have the same approach. We're friends who look at a show and talk about it. Why did The Mandalorian, mild success the first season, second season, a little more. But when we did... The Book of Boba Fett. Our numbers flew off the shelves. We're like, what is going on? We have thousands of downloads. We're like, what's going on? Because there's so much, there's so many podcasts and so many shows on Star Wars. I thought, I'm this, but I'm realizing, just like soap fans, just like sports fans, just like wrestling fans, they want to devour everything. So they may go to their one show or two shows they go to first. It's like, for example, they may come to you first and DC first, but they're going to somehow hit me at some point because they're going to, they're going to go through all the ones because they might have different opinions. And so I realize as long as we stay in our lane and just do our stuff, oh, I've gotten comments like they're lame or they're boring or they like everything, which we don't. They like everything. Or it's like, uh, are you just reading off a teleprompter? I'm like, no, I'm going to have a teleprompter. Um, like this, they they would assault us because they don't agree with us. When the racist stuff started happening with the third third girl, her name was Reva on um, on, uh, on 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 uh, Obi Wan Kenobi, and the actress and Star Wars took up for us. Right? How about that? Uh, mm-hmm. well, yeah, too. I said this 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 racism shit is just like too much, you guys. There's a lot of racist in the Star Wars community. A lot of sexist in the Star Wars community. And I was like, we're not, we don't stand for it. And I stood up for it. I guess I'm backlash for it. But to me, it's about the same as soaps, or the same as, a, but I was shocked that I actually, because in soaps, you can become bigger because it's a smaller group. Then Star, Star Wars is way bigger. And like Star Trek, Star Wars, they're also, those are all bigger franchises. But I found my way in there. And my Star Wars shows are huge hits. And we, and we have found our way in there. And even with Marvel, too, with our She Hulk show, we found, we found our niche. But the fans, we just as equally as crazy. And bonkers as as a soap fans. You know, I, I don't know. Maybe I feel like Star Wars. I mean, don't get me wrong. Not all Star Wars fans are bad, but like the Star Wars fans that are, that are bad. It, I maybe it's just me, but I feel like they're actually almost worse, like more negative than than soap fans. But I could be wrong. I'm still new. To, damn. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> they know what I mean. They know what I'm talking about. Some of us. You know a little better, Albert. I wish you were right, Albert. I wish you're right. Some <laughs> soap fans, I mean, they are ruthless. Some of these soap soap fandoms, like the Jex fans, are fighting the Spina fans, the Spina, fans, the Vanna fans, or over here, like the Jason. Back in the day, it was the J Sam versus Liaison fans. Now, it's, you know, Jason. Let me, let me make sure I, for we don't know this. It's Jason, Elizabeth, and Jason and Sam. Those, oh, okay. You know, then later became the Frizz fans. Which was Franco and Liz. The Frizz fans hated me. Hated really? me. Woo! They, we, we, we were <laughs> warm. Them Frizz fans, I was like, fuck you and fuck you and fuck you. I, we were fighting. I didn't because I didn't I didn't see that. I thought the coupling was horrible. Towards the end, though, I will say this. Towards the end, I liked Franco and Liz towards the end. They what they finally won me over. But in the beginning, I wasn't. I was a liaison fan. So I was like, oh yeah. Oh yeah, the laser fans loved me. So I was like, so I'm just telling you, I double oh double C, I don't double C. So I'm just telling you. I mean, I got ruthlessly raked over the coals. You have, I, you have to remember, last year I was a hashtag on Twitter for two days from so really, they were pissed, they were mad at me, and people were fighting, and it was a huge. I hated it. Oh, for I, what? Some dumb because someone in the soap community started a rumor about me. Um, and accused me of something and says, I didn't really accuse them, but just I don't. 
And so it became this huge, everybody jumped on a bandwagon without finding information. I tried to defend myself at first. I was like, fuck you. And then other people were defending. It was, it was a huge mess. Oh, the, the, uh, was it the event thing? Yes. Yeah, okay. All right. Okay, yeah. yeah what's uh, so ironical about all of that, and she can kiss my grits. Her name is Linda, and she can fuck herself. Here's the deal. <laughs> I have no shame about it. Because that coastal event, you can fuck yourself. Um, I have no shame in saying that. The thing is, a lot of folks weren't doing Zoom events back then, which was so funny. I was doing them. I was getting flack for it. Suddenly, a year or so later, everyone's doing Zoom events. Hmm, I'm seeing more and more Zoom events coming up now. And I'm like, oh, how ironical is that, folks? I was doing it first, kind of, and I was one of the early ones who was kind of doing them for soap stuff. And now, all of a sudden, everybody's doing Zoom events. So they find it's easier. To, it's easy to do. So, but there was no mischief going on. I wasn't, I wasn't trying to scan nobody or no $15. Life, life was it was it was just she made it more than it needed to be, and then her fan base jumped in on it, and they shouldn't have. It was just ridiculous. I I remember I remember that because I remember you coming on live, and my whole thing was like in my head I was like yo what is, what what is James getting in trouble for now? Like what is yeah, James getting in trouble me. for today? Yeah, not uh, not last week. I mean like today. Like I know I got in trouble. I get in trouble all the time. I did over and over the years, and, and I know with my latest thing, I saw some folks who I don't follow. I see everything. We're like, oh, yeah, he's race baiting, and he's and these are from black folks in the soap world. And I think I just think for my latest comments and stuff, and I think I, I think people are afraid of something getting ruined. They're afraid of their favorite show or couple getting ruined. So there's a lot of protectiveness that goes on. So people see what they want to see sometimes. So they say things, they do things, they act out. And I and intellectually, I know that. Intellectually, I know that's what's going on. And but it's not fun to see it happen. Yeah. That's, so it, they all, I'm, I'm sorry. They're all, I suggest Albert get him some cinnamon snack packs. <laughs> <laughs> that's a G. I'm like, I haven't looked over. I saw the, I saw her comment. That's hilarious. Um, but I'm noticing, and when you have a new idea, if it's not, because it something that a GH fan was saying, yeah, making fun of me. If it's, a, if it's a new idea, they're scared of it. They don't, if they, if they don't feel like they're part of it, or they thought of it up with themselves, then you make fun of it. Then you talk down about it. And then the revenge I had was, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to pull back from Twitter, and my Zoom adventure hits. It's my third largest money-making venture that I do now. Is that means I have Zoom, I have classes, events. People come to me, they have a great time. It's like, oh yeah, they make fun of me, but I'm very successful. And I started something in my own lane that I'm just more myself. You don't, you think they're funny? You don't think they're good? Good. I'm not, I'm not swindling anybody. Nobody's because everybody has choice. You don't want to go to an event? Don't go to an event. You know what I'm saying? I think it's sometimes you're swindling people when you charge people five, six hundred dollars for some event. And you get, and you can't even talk to the, you can't even get a, a question in to the, to the star. I've heard all kinds of stuff happen like that on some of these events. So I'm like, at least on my events, the star may stop by and say hello to you personally because they're friends of mine. That's all, that's all I'm saying. Now, how do you, how do you deal with that though? Like, I mean, and you know, this is, this is probably just not, not even so much a question for me because, well, I still get flat for any number of days or whatever. But like, how do you deal? with that level of negativity when you say something and then people call you out or they say something like, how do you, how do you deal with that? I try to mature. <laughs> 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 I try. A lot of cussing happens. Um, no, but I, what I'm learning at the big picture is again, the sort of thing I just told you about, like, I just think I just, it's, it's almost like it's, I, when people do that, I go, Oh, it's, it's just, this is so typical. It's just so like, okay, of course you're going to do that. You know what I mean? I go, I, I, I turn it around to where I'm like, yeah, that's just that's just so typical. Of course you're gonna say this. Of course you're gonna act this way. I say, James, stay in your lane. Stay clear of what you're doing, and stay in your lane. And it's and it's not always easy. Oh, I'm saying it's always easy. But I've learned. I have my lotties behind me. I have my colleagues, my friends in the business, who all believe in me. And I know. And I and I know personally, I'm not doing anything to hurt anyone. I'm not doing anything to get on anybody's nerves. I just talk about what I see, and my coach talk about what they see, and we just talk about it with you. We hear what you say. Um, I did one episode of my show. I got to do it again, but everybody wants it again. 
where I read the mean comments about myself. Um, I went on, I went to that whole show. I think, I think it was, I think it's just called James, almost like mean tweets from, I did my own little version of that. Yes, uh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, it was so much fun. People would call me names. So like, oh, okay, you're fat. Okay, thanks, I am. Uh, all kind of stuff. It's like, Ooh. they have to feel good. It's not me. I have to remind myself, it's not me. It's them. And if you believe there's no racism in the world, then that's on that's that's on you. You believe there's no racism. Maybe it is. Maybe in your world there isn't. I know what I know. And if I'm trying to share something with you, this happened last night with some ton of people. I'm sharing with you what I know. You do what you want with it. I'm learning how to let go, let God. Say, okay, I've shared with you what I know. You go from there. You want to believe me? Fine. You want to believe me? Fine. You want to make fun of me? Fine. I know what I'm doing is fine. I know what I'm doing is good. And this funny. I do. I do all these shorts. I do shorts on airplanes taking off and landing, and people make fun of me. But I get thousands of views on them, and so I tell people, "Go, somebody, somebody wrong there? Why?" I go, "I love your comment, and thanks for watching because I make money." <laughs> I mean, like it's some kind of fun thing. Like you're the one who watched it. I mean, I no one told, nobody said you had to watch my plane take off. I mean, like that's up to you. Um, but I know what I have a business to run. And everyone's not going to like you. I have a business to run. Not everyone's going to like your product. There are folks who are just going to, and there are folks who are out there to get you and try their best to bring you down. And so I just remind myself, yeah, you're nobody. You know, you're nobody. You're, <laughs> nobody. you're nobody, and you're not going to just me. You're not paying my bills because in the long run, when you turn off the computer, I'm here. But I'm here. I'm like, I'm like, you're not paying my bills or nothing. So yeah, you know what? The, what the fuck? So I, so I just kind of, I've had to, I, but it took me eight years to get here, Albert. I'm not saying that was easy breezy. It no, 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 yeah. Get here. It did. Now, <laughs> one of the things, that, and, and I'm pretty sure people in the chat are probably going to sit there and laugh, because I'm not even going to sit there and say this is an inside joke anymore, but one of the things that I got accused for was me having favors in the chat. Apparently, I'm not allowed to have favors. Um, I don't know if you ever dealt with that or like if you even actually have favors or anything like that. Like, because I talked to DC about that. We we joked about it, but like that was one of the things that I was getting flack for because apparently I have favors and apparently I'm not allowed to. I don't know what that's about, but. I was on one of them. That's funny. That was Mr. Lotto. I was on one of them. That's funny. Ms. G, but, do, but do you. I mean, if you don't mind me asking, do you actually have favors, or is it just like everyone is just like? That's actually a very good question. Yes. Um, that I refuse to answer. I'm just kidding. No, it's <laughs> like, you know, for example, I have daughters. I do have a favorite. I'm sorry, kids. I do. I have grandchildren. I do have a couple of favorites. I do. Um, and I'm not gonna lie, to nobody. And everybody's like, we treat you all the same. No, I love my children. I love all of them. I love my grandchildren. I love all of them. I will lay my life down for them. But do I have ones I'm compatible with a little more or I do more with? Yes. And I don't care what that looks like, whatever. I don't I don't treat anybody extra, extra different. Um, but on my fan base, there are some that I've been with a lot longer. There's some there's some fans that have been with me from the very beginning. And I don't necessarily think that they're favorites, but it's just more like We've been through a lot together. So it's kind of it's just almost like, I would say fair called a hierarchy. There are some Lotties that do a lot, <laughs> a lot uh, for me in the Lottie organization. So yes, they get some treatments that may be a little better, but I try to treat everybody the same for the most part. I talk to everybody. I try, well, I, what I try to do is develop a different relationship with everybody. So when I see names like Chikaris, like, cause I know Chikaris, I know Monique, I know Cat Lady. I mean, I know double C. I try to make sure that I have a different kind of relationship with each of them. You know, we have we have our each kind of it's it's not easy to do, but I have years of experience. So it's like I have certain jokes with certain ones. I try to remember key things about them. And so when I talk to them, it's like, remember this? Double C knows like I named a character after his name. I know I know double C's real name, but I can't name the character my auto drama. <laughs> so it's like that's what you know, it's it's the whole point. But when someone gives me money in the chats, I read their comments. I always, I always, but see, I always tell people, everyone thank them for doing this for JLJ Media. If someone gives me money in my a, a super chat, which they do, or super thanks, I say, everyone, stop. Let's thank Albert Boston for that that donation uh, and spotlight them. 
Like, make sure you spotlight them. But I try to have I my for me, I was favorites is more like a hierarchy. They're just folks that I have no longer or talk more to. So my eye may go to them first, but I really try to make sure that everyone who comes to my chat feels welcome by me and that they're important to me also. And it's always easy, but and if someone call, accuses you of having favorites, fuck it. Okay, and let's move on. <laughs> So, so pretty much in, in the chat, James is Smith there saying that I'm allowed to have favorites. So if any person that's Smith there is saying, like, you're not allowed to have favors, I got the word from Soap Godfather himself yeah, that says yeah, it's okay. Yeah. So I, we just going to put that to kibosh at this point. My thing is no one's going to tell me how to <laughs> act or be. I'm 54 years old. No one's going to tell me how I should act or be. I'm going to be however the fuck I want. That's how, that's how everybody should be. In a chat, you should be who you are. Too. I mean, everybody should be who they are. We're not, I'm tired of gatekeeping everybody's lives. Like, no, they don't gatekeep mine either. I'm like, I'm a, if I have a favorite, I'm a favorite. But I don't, but I said, I just have, I just have hierarchies. I have favorites, I have hierarchies. I'm Victoria. But a lot of these names I know, and I so I always try to point out the names and like say hi to you and what's going on with you. And I, I really try to, well, pass on the news. I'm like, just, I'm like, I, just, I just, I do not care. I'm, I am going, if I have a favorite, it's going to be a favorite. Shit. There are actors I love. That I, I, they are my favorites. I say they're hot. I tell them how hot they are. I don't give a shit. We talk all the time on my shows. We do not care. We do not. Nah. It was like, hey, guess you allowed to have favorites in the show. You have to do whatever you want. It's your channel. <laughs> yeah. oh, like, that's, that's how they got that. So as I start messing, I leave. Like, bye. Um, but that's how I just, I'm, I don't care. But I, try, but I seriously do try to develop a relationship with everyone because yeah. actually, if you develop something with everyone, that's how your audience grows. If they see yes. you talk to the same three people all the time, then your audience won't grow. So it's good. So I always say I have hierarchy. Um, it's not so much favorites. It's just folks that have known me better, known me longer, and they've been with me. And they put in the work. They, they've earned their spot. If they've been with you for eight years, or someone's been with you eight years, if yeah. you're an after -buzz, if you're somebody who followed me from after Buzz, you've earned your spot. If you're somebody who followed me since the beginning of the pandemic when I made JLJ Media, you've earned your spot. But also, if you're a newbie, I love you too. Come on in. So the water's fine. So, I mean, I'm, I'm inviting everybody. everybody. Come on in. Get in the pool. Oh, I like a song. Um, but I'm all about that. So, I mean, I just like, yeah, I love I, lo I love new people coming through. So, anybody, anybody's welcome at James Lodge Jr. Land. Everybody's welcome. Very, very interesting. I mean, yeah, I, I always sit there and try to make sure that I treat every person with respect and make sure that they are heard, that they feel like they're part of the chat. Um, you know, always just doing that. And of course, you know, following your blueprints because how you've done it. Um, and I just I just think that that's just very important to sell because I guess the thing, I've seen live streams where it's like, you know, they don't really talk to a lot of people and they may talk to like one or two persons or whatever. And it's like, if you're not going to really sit there and talk to people, then why are you doing the live for? You could just do the video and just been done. Yep. So that's how I feel. It's like, yeah, just put a video out. Well, I mean, why the fuck are you? I mean, and I have some shows I do like do I pre-record. Yeah. I mean, I want the live experience. I want to talk to you. I want to see what you're saying. I will read your comments. Like, I'm looking over. Like, I can't even help it. I'm not even. I'm not, it's not even my show. I'm like the comments. <laughs> um, it's my nature. It's my nature. But that's the whole point about going live is the interaction. And I've seen people I go, I'm like, talk to them, go to, I'm like, go to the chat, go to the chat. And I'm like yelling at the TV screen, go to the chat, go to the chat. <laughs> we'll get upset. They're like, they're not, even, they're not even listening to us. And I was saying that I go, I don't blame you guys for being upset. I do not blame you at all. Because again, you're not building a you're not building a connection. Uh, you say you might as well just pre-record it, put it out, and that's fine. You know, they, but for me. To have uh, hi Albert, a, a Danny Riberio soap show. Who are you, Danny Riberio soap show? Do I know you? Uh, hi, are you? I just want you to know I got you got you got his first hundred two um, views on his video. Nice, talk. nice, I nice, know, I nice. Know. I'm, I know I, I know who he is, but um, nice. I'm very happy to hear that. I will watch your video. That's awesome. I have to look. I have to look you up there. I don't know who you are. Look up. Um, but that's but yeah. So I just I just think it's it's. You're setting the pace for whatever you want to have happen for you. Um, and so to me, the more you're inclusive to your fans, the more they'll feel ownership and co-ownership of what you're doing, and they will follow you and and support whatever. Because, you know, I have books, I have music, I have merchandise, 
I have audio dramas. I have podcasts. I have interviews. Um, you know, I have a whole, I have a bunch of different divisions of my, I, I'm a multi-division multimedia place. And so, and I have a Patreon, I have, you know, I have a SoundCloud and then people follow me on all of those. Cause I have right now 30 Patreoners. And I'm being told that's a lot. I was like, okay, I'll tell you, I, mean, I want more, but it's like, it's like, that, that, that is a lot. That is a lot. I'm, I'm just, just in general, like you got to sit there and, and, and literally pat yourself in the back for that because that's a lot of work. That's a lot of time. That's a lot of effort. That is you putting a hundred percent into what you do. So you need to sit there and and be proud of it. I'm proud I, of it. I didn't know. I was like, my, my friend, I had eleven for the longest time, or my friend, I have six. And I was like, I didn't know. I said, like, I know. So I got, I had up to thirty five at one point, uh, but I'm at thirty right now. It's it's good. Enough. They know we have a good time on there, and I post all this content that I don't share anywhere else, um, and I post it on there and. And luckily, because I do a lot of stuff, I have a lot of extra content, so a lot of things go on there. But it's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot. It's been a lot of fun. There are some folks who only follow me on Patreon and nowhere else, too. And there's folks who only buy my music and they don't do anything else. I have folks who only buy my books and they don't, you know. So I have I have audiences everywhere that I'm always trying to cater to. Must be a lot. I, 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 see, I know it's the name, so I'm just like I'm trying not to pun it, but it's just like I can't it's help it. I can't help it. It's a lot. <laughs> I mean, Albert, what I'm trying to do is my dream one day, my dream is to have a head of my music division, head of my book division, head of my pie. I want to hire people that can actually help our friends. We are your friends to the end. We are your friends to the end. I'm not, I'm not going to uh, But I want to eventually have someone running each of my divisions. So I just be this creative person who puts out, this, here's my new song. Here's my new book. Here's my, I'm doing everything myself right now. So, but I wish I, one day I want to have other folks doing it for me. So is that, is that part of the plan though? Like as far as like moving forward is to just have like the visions and stuff. I mean, I think that that's actually pretty cool. I, I love the fact that you are not just in a presence, but you're also sitting there looking forward. You know, like you, you have a, you have a plan, you have a goal, you have ideas that you want to sit there and move and move forward, and I think that that's very important. Um, yes, yes. And well, yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying to build an empire. So, yeah, go ahead. And I was just going to sit there and say, you know, it's it's really interesting because I feel like most people can sit there and 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 build a following, but it takes a lot to sit there and forge a certain type of following. And that's something that I've learned maybe two weeks ago because. Okay. There's there's certain, no, seriously, because there's certain people that I just had to sit there and just kind of block them because it's like, yeah, this is not going to work out. And so I feel like that's very important. Um, it is. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. You got you have, you have fans in here and stuff. Have you ever thought about a fan name for your fan base? No, not yet. <laughs> uh, let's see. Is it the, the Bostics, the Alberts, the AB? You know, you know somebody asked these. Somebody actually said the Albertians, and I was like, "No, Albertians, about it. Okay, Albertians." Albertians. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, "I was alien or something," but I'm like, "Like, because because when, when when my thing came up, the choices were the mediators, because I'm JLJ media, media. Then someone said Lotters, and then Lotties came up, and Lotties won. That was the one everybody they voted for. So my fan base actually voted for me to have a, a fan base name uh so someone said it mentioned it sounds like the lambs i'm a big mariah carey fan so yes i will take it um but yes i am trying to be i'm trying to build a empire and when you're building an empire you have to build the infrastructure of course which is the meat and potatoes which is all the work but also you have to surround yourself with who do you want around you and what kind of energy you want around you to so go back to your, your, your original point what did I like Albertians? Oh, it's not like which <laughs> it's funny. you're the Albertian. Your fans, they choose your name for you. I don't know. Um, but you have to, but right, you have to, like, like Laura said, you did what you had to do, and that's what you have to do. You have to go, it's my life, this is my time, this is my channel, this is my creation. I, I feel like that name is catching on. It's it's catching on the Alberti, <laughs> the Albertis. Well. Uh, I'm gonna get you. A, I'm gonna get you a fan name. Um, but no. But the thing is, I just think that it's you have you have a right to do whatever you want to do and not feel guilty about it and say screw it. I don't care. 
I don't give a shit. I'm going to do whatever I want. And this is my choice. My choice is to not have some crazy folks. Um, some crazy folks. I got. I got to watch. I got to watch this video um, from yesterday. Because, like, you know, when, when you, you were doing your live stream, and also I was going to do my live stream. You know, at eight p.m. Um, so I got to. <laughs> I just, I just had to get that out. I was like, I do it. I was like, I had my, my co host in Chicago and Baltimore. It's Candace Mack, and I had to do it at five. My time. It's all good. It's all good. I, you know, it's funny too. Here's the thing because I looked, I thought you were going to do it on Instagram. So I went on Instagram first. I was like, uh, oh, he's not on there. And then I went on YouTube. I was like, oh, and it's, it's, it's eight o'clock. Okay. I, I guess we're, I guess we're both on at the same time. That's possible. Awesome. Nah, but it was cool though, because I kept Smith there checking back and forth, um, sit there and see what you were talking about. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna probably watch it because um, it's it's something else. You gonna see me? Yeah, I, I cried, I laughed, I cussed. Oh, it was crazy. And another thing, the noodles, because you always have your new cup of noodles. They always come with noodles or the wynettes. Wynettes. Wow. So okay, that's that's interesting. That is interesting. A cup of noodles. Yes, it's a cup of noodles. I always ask you a cup of noodles. I actually yeah. still do have it right here, yeah, so I'm gonna have that yeah, little bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, the owl, owl, the owl noodles or noodle noodle lights or whatever. Oh, uh, anyway, anyway, back to the thing. Yes, it's a two-hour show, and it's heated, and it's emotional, and it's passionate, and we had up to 160 people watching live. That's my record for a Friday night on a show. Oh, I know. I, I looked at the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> See, we just we're just gonna be honest here tonight. That, that's that's we doing. Nah, I look at the numbers, but what are you doing over there? What are you doing over there? Oh, you got that. <laughs> now I will admit myself, because myself and 104 GH do our shows on the same day on Sundays. They do this first than us. I do check the numbers first sometimes, but we get more numbers than they do. They they, they know it. They're like we know it. But I was like, like what are they getting over there? What are they over there? Okay, I do check. But you know, actually, you know, just on another note, I do love Sundays because it's like. You got James in the morning. And you have a couple of people. And you have different days that come on at like um, six o'clock, and then I do my members around like eight o'clock. So it's like you literally have like a whole Sunday block of of soap opera content, and, and I just like, I love that. Sunday's a good day to do it too. Because bye, Monique. Take care. The, Have a night, Monique. Sundays are good because Saturday's too soon. It's like. Friday just ended, so I guess I got to catch up. I caught up on Bold and Beautiful. Oh, my God. Um, I got to watch. I was like, they're going there. Um, I have to finish watching YNR and GH the last episode, each of those. No, because I'll watch that tonight. So I was like, so Sunday, Saturday's always too soon. Sunday's good. It's also a lighter day. You may go to church in the, you know, in the morning, whatever. You have, you have all these shows you can watch before you go to work on Monday. Like, you have the weekends off. I like that. I do. I think Sundays are a great day to sit back and watch soaps. And then uh, Nikisha also says, um, G Sunday ship, and yes. also, and also Dion's corner that comes on around 11 o'clock. Yeah. So it's like you literally have it's like Saturday morning cartoons, except for it's soap opera content. Can I ask? I, sorry, I was your show, but can I ask a question? Uh -huh. Nikisha, has GH Sunday shift mentioned anything about Sabrina? I'm really curious of what they, I'm curious what she thinks. I haven't, I haven't had a chance to hear what's going on. I wonder what their take to this stuff is on it. Because they're black, so I'm, I'm just curious. The other ones are white, so they're not really saying much. But I'm just curious about the black ones. Uh, I wonder what Sabrina's saying. I wonder what I wonder what Brock's saying. I haven't watched. I'm looking at his channel. So what he's saying. Um, James, when you're in here, you can sit there and ask the chat whatever. Mikasa, Sukasa, as I sit there and say. I'm like, I'm like, excuse me, one second. I'm like, anybody? No. I'll be taking over from now on. No, um, I do enough of that already. I'm fine. But I'm just curious. I'm just curious what something Shift has to say about. I'm not sure if she's saying anything. Or they're talking about her. Um, but anyway, so the, I, mean, I know, I know the, the chat goes slow sometimes. Um, but anyway, that's but back to you. Back to you, Alabastic. And you are the noodle lights. Noodle lights? The noodles? What is he? Who is he? Yeah, we're we, 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 we going we to sit there and work. We're going to workshop that name. Yeah, um. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, it will not be the Albertians. He's like, that was not going to happen. He's like, no, no. But Albertis? I don't know. No. The Bostics? I don't know. I don't know. Come over something. But like I said, it's just, you know, I want to, like I said, I want to sit there and do this Saturday because it was like, you've been spending so much time showcasing so many other people that I want to sit there and make tonight about you. 
about what you're doing, what's going on with you, how's everything going in your world, just to sit there and kind of get a little more in depth with James. Now, I'm going to sit there and ask a question. Well, I'm going to sit there and just drink before I ask this question. Oh, good. So I have to, you, know, I have to, you know, I'll sell true shame the devil, so ask me whatever you want. So, James, would you ever consider dating a fan? Would you ever consider it? Would that ever be a possibility? Not just, just like, just people, like, just if you like that person, would you ever, would you ever consider it? That's a really good question. Because it's funny you say that because I am recognized in this town. And I've been on some dating apps and even LA Black Gay, like even smaller than anything else. We all know each other. So a lot of times it's, I know who you are. What can you do for me? So, Boston Enterprise is like that. Uh, Albies. Oh, cute. Albies. <laughs> yeah, Albies. Like that. Um, I always talk about that. If, if there's a, because I have fans who are, who are, it, well, it depends. Like, just what they look like, I guess. It's like being, being really serious. So, I've had some fans ask me out. And I was like, no, I'm not interested. Um, and because I was attracted to them. No one just wasn't attracted to them. I waste your time. But number two, a lot of women ask me out. I'm not, I'm sorry, I'm not into women anymore. Um, but I got a lot of women who ask me out because I'm always laying them down easily. But with the men that asked me out, there's only been a few over the years, I wasn't attracted to them. So it was it wasn't even a possibility. But there are a couple of folks that I've met that I thought were really cute. And they say they watched they, we watched the show, uh, but nothing they don't want me. No, no, no happened. So I don't know, it's a good question. It might be too weird if they've known me for too long and it was, I don't want them fanning over me. Like, I'm just James. I don't know. I mean, it depends. It really depends. I've had anybody in three years, so I just won't take anybody. I don't, I don't want to want my mom shit on anybody. I'll take anybody. Where was it? Who thinks I'm cute? I'll take it uh, at this point. So it's, so it's not it's not the possibility. It's not, it's not out the realm of possibility. Yeah, I, I guess, I guess it's, in all seriousness, I guess it depends on the situation. It depends on that they are... If they are a fan, but they have to also be able to see me as a regular person, and be able to and be able to say, "I'm not, because I'm not, I'm not a saint. I'm not, you know." I, I want them to be able to go, "Oh, we like Jay. I, I'm a fan of his work. I'm a fan of him." Um, but I can also see James as a regular person. That that's gonna be very important because I have my trust me. I got my moments. I know I do. We all do, but I just I don't know. I was you know as because. Honestly, to touch you, if I had my list of questions, I was ready. I was like, you know what? I've seen James do it enough time. I think I think I, I think I may be prepared for this. But that you was just ask, you, know, you, ask, you can ask me anything. Shit, I'll, I'll like you know, that was that was one of the questions I was like, you know, I was just wondering about that. There are there are there are there have been people that I've come across that I've met. I'm like, oh you're really cute. I'm like, I'm, <laughs> not me. I'm an old man. I'm too old for Albert. I'm an old man. Um, even though I have dated younger, of course. Um, because the old men in my life are too old. Um, but no, I, I have, I mean, I guess it depends on the situation. It really, it really depends on the situation. It just, it just depends. I mean, at this point, it's been three years since I've had a date as the pandemic. So I'm like, I mean, I'm, I'm open to whatever. You, you know, and as, and I think that's probably the other question. You do so much. You are, you're, you're, I don't want to say it's like you're practically spread thin, but you got so much going on. Do you even think that you would actually have to time, I have time. to sit there and date? I do. When, you would um, make I, time. I'm, a, I'm a workaholic, but not a workaholic workaholic. I mean, I would oh, shit. I'll take time off in a second. You give, me, <laughs> you give me a reason to take time off. I will take time off. And most nights, I am free. I mean, after a certain time, I'm not doing. It. I mean, I'm just like I have a choice to either work, or I have a choice to not work. I will go somewhere. It's like my friend Flobo, who I'm wearing his shirt. Flobo, um, he's been giving me out the house. You know, or me and Tony Moore, and then we went to we went and saw Tia Turner the musical the other night. Um, and so, if you get me off the house, then sure. My I work mostly during the day. I'm an early bird. I work in the morning. I work most of the day. I only work nights nice because I have nothing else to do. But if someone says I want to date you, let's go on dates. I will clear the schedule in two seconds. <laughs> and let's, go on, let's go on a date. I've been wanting that. I've actually had a couple I talked to that didn't work out. I was like, I could date. I know. Trust me. I may be busy. But I actually can date, and I because that's what I want. Because eventually, I want a relationship. I want to fall in love again. I want a relationship. That's exactly what I want. And so, I'm not getting any younger. I don't want to just be all work and no play. I mean, I want to play. You know, and folks, I haven't had sex in three years, so I'm ready. <laughs> I don't get. I, don't, I have no shame in saying that. 
The pandemic shut everything down. James Live Jr. is ready to go back out there and get and get it. I love it. I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. We are having what I like to sit there and call a um blue light confessions. I blue love it. <laughs> it's an adult I love it. it and and my members, my members wouldn't sit there and know that's what I'm talking about. So y'all know. Yeah. But the whole, the whole thing is a lot, I'm not the only person. There are a lot of people who are going through what I'm going through, right? We a lot yeah. of us, the pandemic shut a lot of stuff down. Yeah. Try, and if you live in a big city like New York or LA or Atlanta or Chicago or San Francisco, it's hard to connect people nowadays. It's really hard. Like there, it's a lot of people here, but everybody's looking for the, the other thing, you know, it's over here, shiny object. And it's like if you want to have a relationship, you gotta find somebody who wants to hang out with you, who wants to talk to you, who will text you back, you know, who will, you know, not just ghost you and talk to you when they feel like it. Who will go on dates with you? Who will hang out with you? Who will have sex with you? It's like to find someone who wants to do that. That's like a unicorn, like especially in big cities. I'm sure if I was in Pittsburgh, I have a man right now. But in big cities, it's hard in LA. It is hard in LA, and I'm not even picky. Trust me. Yes, I like my black men. I do, um, but of all sh- of all shades. Um, uh, but I'm like, I, mean, I even even the age thing. I've gone lower and lower, and just just because I was like, oh, just, well, might as well just see what's going on. But you're still finding someone who wants to hang out with you more than just a phone call here and there. That's tough in big cities. It's really tough. Um, and if you want somebody, it's tougher. If you're fine, like Kat Lacey, she's fine. I get it. You're good. I was good for a while, too. For a while, I was like, I don't know nobody. And I was good for I had a good time. I was like, yeah, I had a good time. That's all we'll say here. I had a good time. Uh, but then... And then now I want someone. So now, I mean, now I'm getting older and I would like to have somebody steady and regular. Um, and and I actually even said, my last boyfriend didn't even live in LA. He lived three hours north in Fresno. We saw each other all the time. It's like, I went to Fresno. He came here. We somehow kept, it was like, it was almost like we had a few days off. So it was like, it was good. I saw him, then I had a few days off, saw him again, and it worked out fine. It was almost like he lived here. So I'm my horizons, I have broadened my search and my horizons uh, because you kind of have to nowadays. It's just, it's not easy anymore. Yeah, it's it's, <laughs> it's definitely not. It's definitely not. How's it, how's it for you in New York? You're a young, uh, young skinny, tender man, <laughs> black man. I mean, I it's yeah, it's just one of those things where it's like I I need to sit there and try to find a balance because it's like I work and then I do YouTube and of course, obviously, you know, I'm with somebody that actually wants to be me that is going to make me want to sit there and, and take that time, we're going to do it, you know? So it's, um, But you're yeah. in New York. I, just, I, I haven't dated New York in a long time. So I'm like, how, I mean, how is it there? Is it the same like LA? I, Crazy? Yeah, I, I feel like it's, it's pretty much the same thing. Yeah. 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 I said tender. He's young and tender. I was young and tender. <laughs> I was more tenderized, but I was like young and tender. Dewan's like, it's rough everywhere. That's why I, that I believe. I'm just saying, I know yeah. I don't big cities. I just know in big cities, it's really, it's really, it's really rough. I'm not surprised. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like, yeah, like LA, LA and, and New York is not really that much of a difference. No, it's right. Like, it's- yeah, right. Right. And for me, I am not this super needy, super sensitive person. So I want you to, I want you to be fully you, be fully who you are, be it. But then I said, I just, I just want to make sure that we are a team and that you are with me. And that's, and that's how that works. You know, we get we. I let you be you. Let me be me. We be each other together, um, and that's kind of what I. Yes, tender versus tenderized. <laughs> um, I would trust me. I've been tenderized, um, uh, but I just feel like I never try to change people. I don't want. I'm not here. I'm not here to change you. I'm not here to change nobody. It's like just be who you are. Can we see? Can we meld together? Can, are there parts of us that really work together? Nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect. Um, nothing. There's no perfect man at all. So except. My perfect man is a brown man, but I have I have been open to other races too, of course. I've dated other races, but I just I just I just prefer a, a, a brown person. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that your <laughs> likes is your likes. It's, I mean, that's just the bottom line. Your likes is your likes, um, and and at the end of the day, it's it's your view that really matters. So, yeah, you know. well, I, I just I just think that we need to celebrate black on black love more. So, and trust me, I'm 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 mixed race. So I mean, I, I mean, I, I have nothing. My kids are mixed race. As I'm saying, I have nothing against that at all. I mean, it's great. I wouldn't be here. I would say we don't celebrate enough 
enough black on black love. So I'm like, I'm I I like to contribute to that. <laughs> I, just, I, just, I, just, I just like, and it's and it's just shorthand with just another black person. It's a, it's just shorthand. It's just it's just shorthand. I think there's certain things that you and I don't have to say to each other that we just we just gonna get. You know what you know what I mean? We're just gonna get that with somebody else. You have to kind of explain it to them like this is what I mean or whatever. You won't be like. James, are you? I think you like you seeing it wrong. You might be like, I saw it too. It may be a little different. Okay, Nikisha, I did not say we can beat each other together. <laughs> I didn't go that direction. I was like, you saw my phone and look. I did not, I said, I didn't know what I said, but I didn't say that. Listen, we, we, we're trying to sit there and keep this a family friendly show, okay? We, we, we're keeping it PG 13. Okay? That, that may be for the members. But you know what they say about um, skinny, skinny black dudes? <clears throat> I'm sure, I'm sure something's going on over there. So, but I, I feel I was, like I mean, I feel like I may need another drink for that conversation right there. Anybody <laughs> like, you know, I know I've, I've had some experience with the with some of you folks. So I understand, but I did not say that, you guys. I said <laughs> tender, tenderize. I didn't say we could beat each other together. But that's another story. Yes. Jesus Christ! See, <laughs> you, never, you, you never know where this is going to go. You never know where this show is going to go with us. Yeah. You started it, and, I, and I'll continue it. You know that. <laughs> all cheers. I'm a dirty old man, folks, so sorry. It's just, that's how I am. Yes. There is no apologies necessary. <laughs> so, yeah. So, and so, New York is the same as L.A. You have the same issues. Okay, got it. Okay. Yeah. But also trying to find a balance of, because it is, because what you're saying is partially, partially true. We are trying to build our reputations, build all this stuff. You know, and at the same time, you have a regular job. So you have that to deal with you. And I mean, do you have family and stuff there too? Do you, do you see every once in a while? Kind of stuff? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Family and stuff yeah, like that. So yeah. Family stuff here and there. You know, I just came from a picnic. Yeah, I just came from a picnic not that long ago. Okay. Okay. So yeah. Yeah. So you have family stuff occasionally yep. comes up. So to mix all that in, and you're right, when you meet somebody or when, when stuff starts to gel together, you'll know if that person fits in your life or not. I think, I think that's what that's what happens. It's, I know this is a PG show. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, James comes on becomes uh, comes R rated, I guess. Oh, yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. See, this is why you can't have us two together because it's like you just never know what's going to come out of somebody's mouth. You just you just have, don't. He does have nice long fingers, so you know what that means too. <laughs> I have fat fingers. I don't. You know, I can tell you something too. I don't know. How many kids watch soaps today? Nobody watches. No kids watch soaps. No kids are watching soaps. I don't know any kids who are watching soaps today. That's not like it used to was. But you know, I mean, people have started watching soap operas a lot early. Like DC used to sit there and watch soap operas when he was in high school. Well, I'm saying, I could have watched soap okay. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Well, go ahead. No, uh, uh, I was going to sit there and say it's like, I mean, people are watching soap operas a lot younger now. Like DC, me, we started watching soap operas in our high school. You know, like we were in high school. So. I just think that nowadays it's not happening anymore. I think back in the day we were, I was watching since I was eight years old. So, I mean, we were watching them. I just don't think anymore. I don't think anybody, I don't think anybody else is. I think the kids aren't really watching. It's, if you get any new viewers, it's adults. I, mean, I, think it's, I think it's adults coming in and seeing who's here or whatever. But I don't, I just don't, I don't think kids, I don't think the kids are watching. You know, except from, except from Max Upstate GH, my buddy over there. He's a kid who watches. Well, I don't really know that many people who watch. And I, I was, I was talking, I know this sounds so like, I was talking to, but I was, to Maurice Bernard. He's my friend. Um, and I'm Mo. I'm going to be on his show, State of Mind, you guys. We're still working on the dates. I'm going to be on his show. Um, but we're talking about how, no, but nothing, we're talking about the young generation not really watching soaps. They, they're applying for work on soaps as actors, but they're not really watching them. When in the old days, we watched them, and then you go on a soap. So we were saying there's a little difference. We were talking off camera once about that. I'm I'm excited for you to actually sit there and go on state of mind now. Like I'm here's the thing. I've been excited since you actually announced it, like since you were sitting there talking to him. I was like, first of all, you know Sonny's my guy. So the fact that you got, you know, Maurice and you got James in the same room, that's just going to be epic. So y'all yeah. y'all gotta find a way to make that work out because I'm gonna I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna be sitting there watching. Well, you know, watch. one, of the, one of the things that made me so excited about him too is that He's really nice, folks. In real life, to me, is super nice to me, and so attentive and talkative. And I, I love the show. First of all, I love the show, but I just I didn't realize 
that I call Mo now. Like, hey, Mo. Like, I, I never thought I would. I just become friends with. Them. I mean, I'm friends with a lot of stars. Y'all, y'all, nick, y'all, nickname bases. Okay, yeah, all right, exactly. James. Okay, exactly. wow. <laughs> when, I posted, when I posted my shirt I had on with them, he reposted it. It was like, oh my god, look at James. And also, I just, I, I just was not expecting that. But he's actually, he's really mellowing out. He gets older. He's really, um, he's still called Miko Kelly. Okay, I know that's it too. Yes, that's right. He also played uh, Desi Arnaz that movie a long time ago. Um, but it's just, I, it's, I, I, you know, as you know, I am friends with many of the celebrities on the, on the soaps. But that was one of the few ones I was like, I never thought I'd be talking to Maurice Woodward hard. And he contacted me first. He came to me. Because the fans were going to him and saying, do you know James Law Jr.? Do you know James Law Jr.? Do you know James Law Jr.? And I, I'm like, I've interviewed most of your co-hosts, but I've never I've never interviewed him. So I'm hoping I go on his show and I come on mine. That's kind of, that's kind of a hope I'm, I'm hoping. Do you, do you think you're gonna have like a little like fanboy moment or whatever when we like see him live? Or are you just gonna just gonna just keep a chill? I've only lost my my stuff to Christian Alfonso when I met her. Other than that, no, I think I'll be fine. Once now that I've now that I'm talking to him, I it'll be like, oh my god, I'm here, I'm seeing him. But I'll, I'll hold together. Christian Alfonso was the only one. Everybody in the whole world knows. I've <laughs> for all time. I got to finally interview her and meet her. I fell into her arms, sobbing. I was happy. So no, that's the that's the only one I had the, the nerves for. But nobody else, no, I'm pretty good. I um I met Mary J. Blige years ago. I was a little I fangirled out on her a little bit. I was like, I love your music. I want I, from the very beginning. Like I was like, Real Love was my song when I was like 21 years old. Like, I mean, she's my age. And Mary J. Blige was very nice. She's very tall. Um, that was one of the few times I kind of fan girl now was like it's Mary J. Blige. Um so but I usually I usually am okay. I mean, usually I usually I can I've been around I had to sound so bougie. I've been around a lot of celebrities so I actually I I'm, I'm kinda I, I know they're regular people mostly. They're just regular folks. Uh but I did get starstruck with, with Mary J. Blige. I will say that. It was like oh my God Mary J. Blige. Uh, what, about, what about Michelle Stafford though? Here so that okay so that is the craziest thing because yeah. there are folks who I'm super fans of also, Michelle Stafford, Bob's with you. Phyllis, come on, folks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, no. by, the time, by the time I met her, she was on General Hospital, right? So, as Nina. So, when I asked to have her on my show, she was like, sure, no problem, whatever. We hit it off. We just, we're around, we're around the same age and everything. We just hit it off. I don't know, I don't know what it was, but she's like, she's a down home chick. And we just off camera, we exchanged numbers. We kept in touch. She came on shows. May if you're after Buzz, she came on shows all the time. And I was just like, yeah, I remember. So I'm gonna say, I remember AJ Blige at the Trevor Project. She did a thing there a couple years ago. That's how I met her. I was doing. I was. I was. I was volunteering, and I was just on there. Um, but no. But anyway, so uh, so when I first met her, she came in. She's like, hi. Oh my god. She's like, I gave us hugs. Like, oh my god. And she was like just homegirl. She's from LA, like the rest of us. So we're all LA folks. Um, we kept in touch and then we became friends. We started texting, and then I've been to her house. I know my phone. Everybody wants my phone. I know everybody wants the phone. The numbers are in here. Um, <laughs> uh, but but it's like Michelle and I are true blue friends. I know her mom, I know her kids, I've been to her house. I actually helped organize her house. Um, I skin nation, I was there for like she said on my last interview, she said. You were there from the very beginning, and I was. I've been supporting her from the very beginning of that. Um, Michelle is the bomb. I, she's one of my favorite people. Her and Sean Kane are two of my favorite people um, that I that, that have that have both have supported my career. I mean, like they literally well, have supported my career. What about Eric Graydon? That's my man too. And okay, no, okay. yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. Now I will say no, no. This is this way. So I'm at Afterbus TV, and they're like, Eric Graydon needs to interview. Um, he saw your picture and wants you. Like, oh, I'm like the Victor Newman. Now, if you're yeah. a black man in America from a certain time period, you all know about Victor Newman. Your mothers and grandmothers, everybody knew about <laughs> Victor Newman. My mom's like, he's hot. He's hot. I'm going to get the best mom I know. So anyway, after Buzz TV, I was nervous as fuck because I had heard he does not suffer fools lightly. Like, you got to be on your A game and not fuck with him. So I got dressed up in this nice little sweater vest and I was all trying to my hair is all slick back, whatever. He walks in, it was it was like a halo behind him. 
He walks in, <laughs> all jeans, polo shirt, arms, because he works out in his 70s when I met him. And comes in the door, and he's like, James. And I'm like, hi, Mr. Braden. He's like, fuck that Mr. Braden shit. I'm Eric. I'm like, oh, my God. I didn't say that. But I was like, hi, Eric. Like, and, we, and we shook hands, and we hugged, and then we just we were talking before the show. And then we went in. It's a little. I don't. I've never talked about this actually. It's an exclusive on our boss day. I never even talked about my first meeting with them. And then when I went to uh, go into the studio at After Buzz, his his um his um manager uh, um, Charles Sherman, who I know, I work with a lot, was in there too. He goes, Charles, get out. I want you to do this interview alone with James. I'm like, just need you in the room. And I was ready. And like I said, I really, get, I really get nervous. I was a little nervous. And so we sat down, and I said, James, you got to myself, stop being nervous. Here's your chance. You have Victor Newman sitting in front of you. Like, don't fuck it up. Like, seriously, <laughs> that's, what, that's what calmed me down. I was like, calm the fuck down and do your job. Because he'll like you if you do your My thing was like, he'll like you. Well, if you watch, I have it on my TikTok. I've had it on my, my, my reel. At the end of the show, he said, James, you're the best interview I've had since Larry King. And I almost started sobbing. Because I know he meant it. I know that Victor, that Victor, I know that Eric Brain doesn't say anything. <laughs> Somebody's going to get mixed up. And he said that he goes, you want to know why? I go, why? He goes, because you listen. And I, I said, clip that clip. Clip that clip. That's going to put that in my, my reel. Um, and we clipped it. It's on my, it's on my TikTok. It's printed on my TikTok. You can see it. He said it to me. And I thought, and that's the key, right? And that's the key is to listen to people and talk to them. And I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Like, this is crazy. This is crazy. And so um, we became friends. Like, literally, right after that, we talked for like a half hour after that. And, I, and, and so then his book came out several years later. And he was like, I'm only doing 10 outlets across the country. James Lodge be one of them. I was one of 10 outlets that sat down with them for an interview. And I have his autographed book. He came again. James, oh my God. So I've interviewed him four times. And then right before the pandemic, they had his 40th anniversary celebration at Television City. And I was invited. And I have a picture of meeting them together. I went, I went, I went to it. I was one of a few folks invited. I went. Michelle Stafford was there. Bruce Bernard was there. I mean, everybody was there. Uh, but I was invited. I was one of a few press that was invited. And I was just like, oh, my God. It is. He, he's my friend. He said he's my friend. And they was, when I put the videos out, right, he's like, he goes, best in the business. He's, he endorses me on Twitter. Best in the business. And, and so I get, I mean, if he says it's true. But that was, that was one of the ones I was, I was there. But he's my friend. And so I, I really I talked to him recently, so because of the can of the cancer stuff. So he's he's a fighter. He's a fighter. Yes, of course. Skills, you know, he's all that. And, I, and I'll tell you, at GH fan, you are absolutely correct. People who are interviewers sometimes just listen, but don't listen and do the next question. And just do the next question. To me, the gold is in their answer. I follow, I have a little notepad. We're kind of where I make sure I want to mention these like three or four things, like like Albert said he had the things we want to mention. But the gold is in the conversation. And I can tell you they can go, they can go anywhere. And, you have, and they may tell you something they've never told. Like just now, I just gave you a story I've never told anybody else. Never. So Albert, congratulations. <laughs> You're my best you since Eric Braden. I'm telling you. Um, so yeah, so Eric Braden's my friend, Krista Allen's my friend, uh Pika Darbo's my friend. Kathleen Gotti is my friend. Like I have a lot of friends in a business. Colleen Lanier is my friend. I, mean, I, just, I just have I just fuck Perry Shen's my friend. Wally Kurtz is my friend. These are all folks who support me in my business. They support me, and that's why I'm like, they know that I'll do good for them, and they'll do good for me. Like we, it's a, it's a scratch shows backs. And I'm very fortunate. As I say, yeah, this phone, Daisy Flower, one of my lotties, she gets the phone when I die. <laughs> Now, well, I give it a password. I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, it's, it's password protected, folks. So don't try to send my phone. Um, but yes, it's, uh, I am very, the fact that I'm so press and friends, that's not common either. So I'm always having to 
walk that line too, where I am friends with them. I'm friends with Eden McCoy. I'm friends with Tabiana. I'm friends with, you know, I'm friends with Sydney Michaela, the ex one, you know, the ex, the ex, uh, Sabrina. there's people I'm friends with, you know, I, I mean, I, so I just, I've decided to, you know, I have to be careful sometimes and just go, okay, I can put full disclosure. I'm friends with this person, you guys know. Um, but that's the thing. I, I'm friends with Steve Burton. I mean, it's like, it's just, it's, you know, it's just kind of how it is. I was a people, I was a people magazine because of that. So that was the whole thing. I was friends with Christoph St. John, the Lakers of St. John. So I mean, like there's, I just have to, I'm in the business, but I also make friendships. I make friendships with the PR people, the managers, um, the folks at CBS. I work with them all the time. Folks at Hallmark, I work with them. Uh, it's just, I, I become friends and I try to keep it a friendly atmosphere. So I can get what I want. That is that is amazing. Like I honestly told you, like you know, like I said, like you have to sit there and literally, like, be proud of yourself because you accomplished so much. And like you said, you know, you kind of you came into the game kind of late a little bit, but like you accomplished more than what most people have done that has been in this business longer. So, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that that's thats an impressive feat on his own. Yeah, I never think about it until someone brings it up. Or the other day, I was looking at my um, my audio dramas. I have 17 of them. And I wrote or co-wrote all of them. And I was like, and that's in three years. Like, wow, James. Like, some are on their second season, third season. Like, I did all that. Like, it did, I, I'm so busy doing it. That there is that there is no there is no uh, ego. It's just I'm just so busy doing it. When I stop us for a second and go, oh, or you go, James, you have you have sixty five books. I have sixty five books out there, written or co written by me. Like, oh yeah, I do. I have over twelve albums. Like, oh yeah, I do. I'm so busy just doing them. I'm not thinking. Here is my. Tw- I mean, I know it's my twelfth album, but I'm not thinking. I've done twelve albums, so fuck you. I'm just. Like, yeah. I'm so busy. I'm so busy Think of the next. My life is on a schedule, like yours is when it comes to this stuff. It's like Mondays I do this, Sunday is the shows, Wednesday is this. Like I'm so busy on a schedule, I don't always think about what I'm actually putting out there. You know, so I'm just busy. I'm just busy doing it. I know Mots. Come on, Mots. I know. <laughs> I know. But here's what's funny because I, now I'm an influencer. Apparently, my my Instagram reels and my TikTok. Now I'm getting people sending me stuff. So I have a I have like five unboxing videos to do, but none of them are bots. Yes, that's right, Jess. They do need to sponsor both of us. Yes, I agree with that. I agree with that hundred percent, Jess. Come on, Jess. Mots. Jess. Come on. <laughs> no, so folks, if Albert and I were together, what would our ship name be? I think would it be Ames, Jaybirds. <laughs> Would it be um, Jabert, Elaine's? I don't know. I'm feeling Jaybird. I'm feeling Jaybird. I'm not gonna lie. I'm kind of feeling Jaybird. Jay and Bert. Is Jaybird yeah. it, you guys? Is Jaybird it? For the Albert Albertians. <laughs> <laughs> See what you started, James. See what you started. I know. I but you have to. You have to have. You have to have a, a, you have to have a fan base too. Like, that's you have a fan base. Um, Thank you, Laura. I, I appreciate that. I just I put out. I'm I'm a mass producer. I put out a lot of work. I just put out. I just put out shit. I put it out. Move to the next thing. I don't have time where my bite thinks about it. I just I put it out. Do it. J. Oh, they have J birds. J birds. I like that. I mean, well, I'm not meant to say like have an ego. I'm just meant to say you need to be. You need to sit there and be proud of your work. I know you are proud of your work, but like, I want to sit there and reinforce that because it's a lot. It's it's more than what most people are doing. You put 110% into what you do. And I think that that's very important to sit there and recognize. Well, thank you. I think that's, yeah, I think that's that's why I want to sit there and do this live stream tonight. Um, Bostic Lot Incorporated. I, like, I actually like that name. Actually, that works. That kind of, that kind of, that's kind of work. <laughs> bots. That's so funny. Bots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so funny. A lot. Oh, that's funny too, actually. A lot. A lot. That's actually, wow. That's too. This, so we got a lot of we got we have a lot of choices. Okay, I'm just not sure. <laughs> that is hilarious. A lot. Bots, Jaybirds, the blot, the blots. That's another one too. 
That is hilarious. <laughs> that is awesome. That's hilarious. That's was that was seriously. That's how it started with me. I was like, all of a sudden, I think I think Danny's writing some stuff. He's telling you something. He said, it was Danny short. says, Albert, look, put a two short for GA and days on Monday and going to play it long. Nice. Okay, I'm looking forward to watching that. That's gonna be awesome. Like, who is Danny? You're like, what's going on there? Danny Roberio. Is he Alfonso's cousin? Who are you? <laughs> you're not, you guys are like, are you doing that? I mean, who are you? Are you but so, yes, go ahead. No, no, I was gonna sit there and say, so before we end, is it anything that you want to sit there and say to the audience as far as your thoughts or anything like that? You know, anything you want to promote, anything like that? Well, just I just want to tell you, oh, boss, <laughs> like that. No, I just want to say, I just really want to say support up and coming people, especially of color, especially women, especially trans, especially LGBTQIA plus. Start supporting folks who are trying their best to put out products, especially if it's, if it's a subject that you like. Um, share that takes two seconds. Share their content. Mention them on things. Tell a friend. Whatever you know. Press a like button, you know, make a comment. I just think it's it's very important for a lot. There's a lot of people out there who work very hard and feel like they're just like not getting it. They're not getting the, they're not getting anything, and they're just not getting ahead. And I and I so I speak out for the underdog because I'm doing pretty well, and I and I'm very blessed by that. And I want to thank everybody for that. But anybody else who's just starting out, who subscribe to their channels, hit their stuff up. See what they're about, you know, and if there's something that's on, if, if, you're, if they're your fancy, so to speak, show them out and show them out. I think, I think we need to do that more. Um, and there's a place for everyone. There's a place for everyone. And uh, especially if you're doing something that's positive. Uh, I will always support folks who are positive. That's kind of, that's my thing. The only thing I really want to promote besides that, besides just sharing with each other, I do do a lot of... Um, Zooms. I teach classes on how to do YouTube channels, writing, uh, how to do interviews. I have a bunch of them coming up, and they're inexpensive on purpose. Because I actually have a practice that's very expensive. I have expensive clients, but for the fans, I do a much smaller price: ten dollars, fifteen dollars, twenty dollars. Come spend a Saturday with me, and you'll learn something. I will give you everything that I know. Um, so check out my Zooms at JLJ Media or James anywhere you find James on Junior JLJ Media. They will be on there. Um, and follow Albert, follow, support Albert, make sure you take care of him, uh, make sure you look out for him, uh, call him out if he has to be called out, do it if you have to, you know, <laughs> some, some, some tough love, um, no, but make sure that you follow him and, um, support whatever his ventures are in his shows. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that, James. And like I said, you know, this is, you know, I, I was, I was looking forward to this all week, like. I really worked down my questions on Wednesday. I was like, yo, listen, I am prepared. I'm ready for this tonight. Um, and I think, like I said, I think it was just really important because I wanted to sit there and showcase you and have people know a little more about you because you're always in there showcasing other people. You're always in there supporting other people. It's like, you know what? I know it's not your birthday, but let's sit there and, and celebrate James. Let's sit there, um, show him some love and just really... Give Miss Flowers because you you do so much for everyone else. You do so much for everyone else. Um, you do so much for me. You know, just as far as like, you know, inspiring me to sit there and do these live streams. Like I started doing these live streams because of you. Um, the way you the way you've done it, the way you sit there, you listen to the audience and stuff like that. So there's a lot of things that I do sit there and pick up. Um, so I felt like it was very important to sit there and just kind of, you know. Give you your flowers because you deserve it. I received that. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Again, this is, this is black on black love. That's what we're doing. We're, we're an example of that. We're showing examples of that. And uh, for our other colleagues too, especially like I said, like Brock and DC and Tony. And we, we are here for, and Dion, everybody, we're, we are here for each other. So this is a great example. So thank you, Albert. I appreciate that. And of so if Albert, if Albert asked me out on a date, I'd say yes. <laughs> Same city, sure. I'll go do it. Why not? We're the same. We're not the same city. We're at opposite ends of the world. I'm way out here. You're out, you're out there. Well, see, I know I have to sit there and think about that because now I already sit there and know the answer. So I have to sit there and be sweating or anything like that. I just need to looking at my phone, and be like, will he sit there and actually say yes? So now I already know. 
So yeah, I'm, just, I'm, glad we got, I'm, glad, I'm glad we got that out the way. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Everybody in chat room. Thank you very much, everybody in chat room, for enjoying this. They're saying they're enjoying it. So thank you very much, everybody in chat also. Yeah, no, no, seriously, thank you, everyone, for, for joining us. I know normally throughout the week or whatever, always sit there and go back and forth with people. So I just really appreciate everyone being here. Um, like I said, I appreciate people supporting James because, you know, I'm, I'm James is the morning guy. I'm the night guy. That's just how it is. It's definitely sometimes he comes on at eight o'clock, you know, at night because, you know, why not? But whatever. It's, it's cool. It's no, there's no shade or anything like that. But um, I'm usually in the morning. I'm usually in the morning. JLJ this morning. No, but or, no, but definitely, yeah, no, but definitely support James. Definitely, like seriously, support him. Um, Patreon, his his events and stuff like that. He, listen, he was not there dropping some knowledge for free tonight. There's a little bit of knowledge, so you want to sit there and go back and sit there and pay attention to that. But definitely sit there and support him on his channel though, because he deserves it. And um, he inspired me to sit there and do this. So thank you. Tito Shade, yes. And Anne, it's, it's nice to meet you. I know you've heard of me. Now you've heard of me. Because I was like, now you're heard of me. And Susan, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you a message. Uh, some good stuff. I'm going to send you a message. And hi, Victoria. I'm going to try to everybody. And Solomon. I know Solomon. I know Darby. Darby, and I know each other. I know a few. I know some of these people in here. Um, Here's I'm, funny because I, I feel like. I am just okay. I am just okay. <laughs> I'm just okay. I get it. I, I take soft showers and hot sauce and, 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 and bass and applesauce. <laughs> <laughs> You know, as I know, it's really funny because yes, or, or you could sit, or you could sit there and get this size too. I'm just, you know, just throwing yeah, it out yeah, there. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys. No, thank you, thank you so much. Um, this is this is a lot of fun. So yeah, like I said, definitely support James. Um, and you know, if listen, if you if you take nothing away from this, take the simple fact that yeah, we we both sit there and do so public content. But we both support each other. It's not a, oh, well, James is not there doing good today. I'm going to sit there and best him tomorrow. It's like, no. He supports my channel. I support his channel. And that's just how it is. That's how it is. Yes. Even when we even when we were sitting there and disagreeing on stuff, because, oh, yeah. listen, throughout this year, we're going to disagree on some stuff. I, I just want to point that out now. But at the end of the day, James is my guy. And the only person that can sit there and come at James is me. I just want to put that out there right now. You're a Leo. When's your birthday? Uh, 22nd. What's coming up? Okay. I, I knew it was coming up at some point. Okay. I knew I was like, Leo season's coming. I knew that was coming. Yeah. Up. We're in cancer right now, but I know Leo's coming next. Okay. I was oh, yeah, the, the only person I could sit there and come at James sideways is me. That's, <laughs> I, I claim that. And that's, just, that's just how it is. So. And Susan said, our name, to... Susan said our name would be Bolo. How would that Boston. work? Bostic a lot. It kind of works. Bolo. I kind of like the other. I kind of like the other names a little bit better. I feel like they, they, they have a better ring to them. Let's just we, don't know. No Albertians. No Albertians. He's not doing. He didn't like that. One. Yeah, we're not. We're not doing that. <laughs> so so you need to sit there and stop trying to you know because I feel like once you start saying something, it just kind of catches fire. So let's just let's just put that out right now. But listen, thank you all for, for joining. Like I said, support James. Go to check out James' channel. And you know, while you're there, don't sit there and forget about me. So, because you know, James can be very entertaining, but I want to make sure people don't forget about me as well. So, yeah. Yeah. thank you everyone for joining. Tomorrow, so I guess tomorrow. Sorry, so I tomorrow. Oh, also, yeah, and, and I was going to sit there and say, James is actually on tomorrow. You're going to be doing YNR and GH with um, Tammy and Amanda, and Amanda, and also GH with Frank because. I don't know. Every time, every time, every time Frank starts talking, I was like, you know what? I agree with Frank. I I, I like Frank. Frank you Frank would, Frank is cool. Agree with Frank. I think you would agree with Frank. No, Frank's the best. Frank's the best. Frank's the best. So yeah, definitely join him tomorrow. He's going to be on. And you know me, I'm going to be sitting there on at eight o'clock. You know how we roll. So definitely support both of us. Also, um, distant days because distant days going to be on tomorrow too. So. We got a fun day tomorrow. So thank you everyone for joining. This is a lot of fun, and we will both see you in the next live stream or video. Later.